first. Acclaimed spreads.
Hello and welcome everyone to another fantastic Tuesday here on the Exploding Dice channel. My name is Askren and I am your host, but I am not your dungeon master. I have given that job up to better minds than I as we are coming to you with a game that I am super, super excited to be here for. I We have rounded up the Monty Cook game team and we have, we have gotten together to play... Uh, what is going to look like a fantastic Numenera one-shot as part of our Dice Sember charity event. We're going to get into all the specifics about that, but before we do, let's say hello to these fantastic people that you see on screen with me. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Doing good. Good. Good to hear it. Um, 
well, before we uh, before we dive into uh, into everything, um, why don't I just uh, I just introduce our dungeon master for the evening? You can see him sitting right next to me is Mr. Sean Reynolds uh, to tell us a little bit about what he has in store for us. Uh, tonight's scenario is the uh, the PCs are going to be exploring a an old ruin from a prior world uh, and from the world of Numenera. And it has been taken over by a warlord and his evil nano cronies who are using crystal technology to turn prisoners into augmented super soldiers for his army. Fan. Fantastic! I am looking forward to it. Uh, we have a we have a bunch of stuff. We're going to tell you guys about how about this charity thing, what we're doing here, all the good stuff. Um, but before we do that, why don't we go around the table and have our players, our fantastic uh, people that are joining me today, introduce themselves. Tell me a little bit about yourself and who you are playing. Let's start right above me with the lovely Shauna. Hi, I'm Shauna Germain. I'm co-owner of Monty Cook Games and one of the designers as well. And tonight I'm playing Meli, a learned nano who talks to machines. Uh, she's not super great with people, in fact, has an inability with communicating with other people, but she has a fantastic ability to communicate with devices. And so uh, she also carries a ton of books. Right now she has five books in her pack, uh, which is her, one of her goals is to find a machine that will carry her books for her. <laughs> Sounds like a like a good assistant to have. Um, of course, we have uh, next to her. Whoa, my camera just went out of focus. We have Mr. Monty with us today. How's it going, man? It's going well. It's going well. Hi, I'm I'm Monty Cook. Uh, I'm uh, also one of the owners of Monty Cook Games. I'm a creative director here. And uh, tonight, I am going to be playing uh, Abijah who is a tough Jack who exists partially out of phase. Abijah has kind of a shady background. Um, the fact that he can uh, walk through walls, he has used for nefarious purposes of, of uh, thievery and, and whatnot. Um, but he is trying to walk the straight and narrow. Now he is, he is trying to make something of his life. He wants to be more than just a thief. Um, and so he is, uh, he's interested in trying to learn new ways to use his talents for things other okay. than stealing people's things. A noble goal to be sure. Uh, and of course, under him, we have Mr. Bear joining us. Hi, I'm, I'm Bear Wider. I'm the uh, art director for Monday Cook Games. Um, tonight I am playing Kyrese, a mechanical nano who murders, um, doesn't sound maybe terribly nice. Um, I'm I'm not terribly good with people, the, at least the ones who are still standing and living. Um, but uh, uh, as long as they're still, I, I, I like them quite a bit. Um, and uh, I'm not trying to change my ways, although I'm uh, perhaps not trying to, uh, uh, maybe I'm trying to do this a little less for money and just more for pleasure. I don't know, so. Sweet. Fantastic. Uh, and you guys know me. My name is Askren. I am going to be playing Karner. He is a swift glaive who fights with panache, uh, which is not the, which is not the name of his, his sword, I promise you. Um, <laughs> he uh, he is he's kind of a kind of a troubled, uh, troubled guy. He's just he's he's trying to impress people. He's trying to seem like a little bit more more than he is. Um, maybe earn himself a reputation that may or may not be deserved uh and uh and make some money while uh, uh while fighting well. um so that is that is our characters uh before whoa. oh no <laughs> darcy dropped in monty get, i got half a monty it's all right there we go <laughs> now i've got the full monty i was not i promise i wasn't keeping that joke <laughs> in the back pocket uh, so, uh, before we dive into our game, before I hand things over to our Dungeon Master, just a couple of bits of business, let you guys know what is going on. First and foremost, if you guys are new to the channel, welcome, specifically, especially welcome to, uh, oh, Nino Chuck with the Prime subscription. Thank you, my friend. Uh, thank you so much, guys. If you haven't already, raise a drink in chat for the new subscription. Um, we are doing another game as part of our Dice December Charity Month. We've been doing an entire month here of charity, um, 
And uh, thank you, Kebelak, coming in with the Prime sub also. Guys, raise drinks for all our new subs. I'm going to be telling you about the subs in just a second. Um, but we have been raising money all this month uh, for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. You can see down below us, we have been going all month. We have raised... We have raised Oh, I keep hearing myself pop in and out. Uh, you can, we have raised a total of three thousand six hundred and sixty-one dollars and sixty-nine cents uh, for the chariot for St. Jude's so far, and we're hoping to kick that up even higher. Uh, of course, you guys can get involved. You can donate to St. Jude's, and you can help mess with our game, either either make things easier or harder on the players here. Uh, you know, however you like it. Um, of course, if you uh, Dice Thulu will have all the information. In chat, all you have to do is type exclamation point charity, and he will tell you everything about it. Uh, if you have not already, by the way, make sure you hit that retweet link. Tell all your friends to come hang out with us and that we're having a good time. And if you like the channel, uh, hit the follow button. And if you really, really like the content, please consider hitting that subscription. Uh, we have some giveaways and some cool stuff that is going to happen at some various sub goals. Subscriptions are uh, the way to help us keep running the channel and producing all the content that we do here. Um... That is, uh, that's pretty much all you need to know about the, the charity thing. Um, so, thank you, Wall 7 for the subscriptions. I'm probably gonna not be calling out subscriptions during the game, just so we don't interrupt the flow, but thank, but I will thank everyone at the end. Thank you so much, guys. Um, since you guys know, you, you guys know about the, uh, the donations and all that, I'm going to hand it over to Sean to take us on an adventure. Great, thank you. All right, so you all live in the southern lands of the Ninth World. It is a frozen kind of bleak place, and it's always kind of scrounging for resources. Uh, the three of you have been kind of taken under the wing of some more experienced uh, explorers of the Ninth World, and you are kind of holed up in a little village recuperating from your last adventure when uh, one of your mentors, a, a glaive named Grost, stumbles into town gravely wounded with a bunch of weird crystal and growths on his back. And uh, he kind of chokes out uh, a few words about how Warlord Jarg is building an army of soldiers augmented with crystal and powers. Uh, you take him into you know, the, the room where you're staying and like these crystal and growths on uh, Gross's body are not something he normally has. They seem to have been implanted there. He's very, very wounded, gravely injured, and he explains that he and the other two uh, explorers that you have worked with before, who are Carvu and Ligal, uh, the other two died, but Gross managed to escape uh, after being implanted by these things, but something has gone wrong. He's going to sketch out a map of how he got out so that you can work your way back in, infiltrate through this secret passage, get to where... Uh, these other people who have been kidnapped and are being experimented on, you can rescue them and hopefully destroy uh, whatever technology uh, this weird nano, whose name is Delthos, who calls himself the doctor of crystals and pain, uh, is using to, to mess with people. So uh, you've gathered up your ciphers. Uh, unfortunately, Grost did perish, and as as he died, his body kind of completely crystallized over and then just shattered into these glass sand-like fragments. And so now he's just this pile of sand in the, the room that you're using. You've gathered up all your equipment, you know, strapped on all your gear, and uh, taken this little sketch map, walked this crazy uh, path up the mountainside to uh, a cliff face, climbed up the cliff face into a small, probably around three foot by three foot, seems to be like some sort of warm air ventilation is blowing out of here. Uh, this is a, a yeah, Antarctic sort of environment. So you all have your cold weather gear on, you're climbing up all this ice, but now in front of this, this aperture, there's this warm air. It smells kind of dank, like a lot of animals have been living in there. And, uh, but this is, this is the, uh, the way in for you. And all right, uh, so we're going into the ruin looking for Delthos, the doctor of crystals and pain. That is the coolest name I've ever heard. <laughs> are there any preparations you want to do before you start climbing into this thing? 
Uh, do we know anything about? So I know you you went over it a little bit. Um, uh, do do we know anything specific about this ruin? Any any clues about who you know? Is it inhabited? Is it? Um, does anyone know anything about it? Has it been mapped out at all? So the people in the village did not know about it. Uh, Grost tells you uh, he related to you the information uh, that he was able to discover. Um, it's uh, a, a relic of one of the prior worlds. He doesn't know which one, but it means it's very, very old, thousands, perhaps 10,000 or more years old. There's a lot of crystal-based technology built into everything instead of like here on our, our contemporary earth, we have, you know, mm -hmm. smartphones and glass-based stuff, but this technology all seems to be based on crystal rather than magnetics and such. Um, there's a... Uh, there are parts of this facility that have been, seem to have been carved out of the rock or the ice, depending on what sort of material is there, and then reinforced with big plates of metal or plates of synth, which is the ninth world term for various kinds of plastic. Um, mm -hmm. The inhabitants are, like, apparently it was abandoned, but Warlord Jarg has moved in with some of his uh, cronies, along with Delthos, the doctor of Crystal the Pain. Uh, and there are some prisoners in there. Uh, Jarg also has, his, his soldiers have been known to fly around on these big furry winged creatures that kind of like shed this light that withers flesh. So presumably they might be holed up in this facility somewhere as well. And he has a large number of regular warriors. All right. Uh, before we start, uh, PJM Fox, Donates twenty dollars. He says a net twenty for Shauna. <laughs> so, you have a net twenty to spend when you'd like one. I like this already. Then you should probably help us find a way in, cause I, I just, I just sword things. I don't, I don't do much else. <laughs> well, I have, um, you know, I, I am pretty good with maps and and cartography in general. So it. It, when I look at this map that he gave us, is there anything that I can tell about, like, is there a way in that seems the safest? Because while I am not a coward, this whole thing we're doing doesn't seem very safe. Yes. So there is a large entrance that the, the warriors use, but this map that you have actually directs you to what might have been a ventilation shaft or something used for transporting small things in and out of the facility. Um, and this is what uh, Gross used to get out. He got into this thing, managed to crawl, found this exterior entrance, and then staggered all the way back to the village. So you are now on a small cliff face after climbing up a bit of the cliff. There's this aperture into the, the facility, and uh, there's warm air coming out of it. So like all around you, there's a lot of slush and melted snow from this warm air. It's kind of, kind of feels kind of humid and disgusting you're still wearing all your your winter clothes i need just a little bit more clarification so there is the guy named delthos yes. but there's also a warlord or delthos is the warlord delthos works for the warlord the warlord is jarg jarg sorry okay delthos is a, a crazed nano Apparently. And, and so uh, our mission is to rescue the prisoners or kill Delphos or both? Grost has asked you to rescue the prisoners, destroy whatever technology Delphos is using to turn people into these augmented warriors. Okay, good. Um, I will, uh, as a Jack, uh, I will select my uh, flex skill today to be stealth. Good choice. Uh, do we have a sense of, uh, with this map and what um, uh, Grost had told us um, about how, from this entry point, how far in does it does it take us to get to um, where uh, uh, Jarg would be? Is this like uh, if you took the most direct route, it probably would be at least an hour crawling through these tight spaces. Okay. Um, <coughs> If that's the case, I have a cipher that I want to go ahead and uh, use right off the bat as it lasts for 28 hours. Um, uh, this is a time dilation nodule defensive. And um, what this does is for the next 28 hours, the wearer of the armor moves in seemingly random rapid jumps a few inches to one side or the other when attacked. Uh, this is an asset that modifies attacks by two steps in the wearer's favor. Good choice. 
Anybody else want to activate any ciphers before they start moving around in this thing? You know, I want to offer up, uh, I have an invisibility nodule that um, works to help make armor invisible, uh, but I don't have, it makes you appear to be unarmored, but I don't wear armor. So does anyone want to, to use that? Would that be beneficial to anyone? Uh, armor? It's, it makes your armor seem invisible, so you appear to be unarmored. Uh, do I have armor? Uh, I have, <laughs> oh, I am practicing, well, I'm practicing armor. You're probably I, I, wearing light armor. If you're yeah, playing. I'm wearing chain mail. It's medium armor, yeah. There's actually no drawback to you using that. Like, once the cipher is used, it doesn't count towards your limit, so you could be like, invisible armor, and then go about your business. Sure. So I have um I have my I have a cipher. Uh, the only problem is it, it lists a page number. I don't have the rule book directly in front of me to reference I what it that. is. What cipher is that? What page? It is the instant servant. Ah. <laughs> so it can that's carry pretty... my books. That's yeah. a, I... <laughs> no, he's no, he's just for important things. He has dignity, okay? <laughs> That creates a little automaton that's about two feet tall, and it'll follow you around, and it'll carry. Can I send stuff. it to do stuff? It's not really yes. good for combat, but yes, you can verbally command it to okay. do. Stuff. If it now, if it explodes or gets pummeled or anything, is it just done, or do I do I create? Mo can I get more? Like, uh, it's a cipher, so it's a one-use thing. Like when this thing runs Got out it. of power or gets blown up. That's <laughs> So, uh, and we, we still have to, f we have to make our way to the door or we're outside the door? You're outside the door right okay. now. Hey, uh, what, what do you say if, uh, what, what do you, what do you think if I say it and send, um, uh, uh, um, send my, my, my little gobot in and if there's anything nasty inside, he can, he can, he can let us know by blowing up. <laughs> sure. That seems very smart. <laughs> so uh, I guess he'll put him. Uh, we'll we'll put him down. Yeah, he's a, he's he looks like a Roomba. I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna say. Uh, he's gonna put him down in front of the door, like unfold his little uh, his little arms, cause I he's a Roomba with arms, uh, and then he's just gonna push him through the door. All right. It actually responds to your verbal commands, so you can just tell it to go down that way. You well, just like I, pushing him, don't you? I like pushing him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I imagine I, I have to pull him back like one of those old, you know, wind-up cars that you just pull back and then let it go. Yeah, see, this is a sign of how run down this piece of technology is and that you need to wind it up before it goes back. Look, man, he's, he's precious, okay? All right, so you're just going to send it down this... Uh, metal if, shaft ahead of you yeah i mean if there's a if there's a tunnel and we're you know i i don't want to walk in here without um i assume actually i, I assume this this little this little guy is probably beaten up because i do this about like he does this bunch like he uses them for 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 trap detection and stuff so yeah he'll just send him in and see what happens this is probably the 10th or 11th little robot like he just re like. rebuilds them every time <laughs> all right so you wanted to like keep no, I just want to. I just want to send him down the hallway. See if it, it, anything triggers anything like that. All right. Uh, all right. So you do that. It marches uh, straight ahead, and you wait a bit, and it kind of gets out of your line of sight. You can kind of hear it clanking along, and eventually, it's so far away that you can't hear it anymore. But you don't hear any explosions or weird noises. Just this kind of constant outward draft of humid, warm, animal-smelling air. Um, remind me, I'm sorry, how, how uh, this is like an access shaft, right? So how big are we talking about? Three feet by three feet. Okay, so it's definitely something we're kind of mostly crawling through um, dark very quickly, I assume? Yes. Okay. Um, I have a, uh, one of my oddities is a blue crystal that glows as bright as a candle when held. So I'm going to pull that out and uh, see if I can't shine it down and, and uh, get a little better view also of what we're seeing. I, I assume his, his uh, assistant or bot maybe had a, a little bit of light, so we probably saw it as it was going and disappearing, but it probably very quickly uh, didn't really show us much. So I'm just see if we can see a little bit better before uh, heading in. All right. Uh, yeah, the candle doesn't give off, you know, I mean, your crystal doesn't give off a lot of light, but it's enough to see at least 10 or so feet clearly. Cool. 
Uh, okay, uh, I'll I'll go first, and uh, I will try to move with with stealth, and uh, crawl down this access shaft. I guess. All right. Uh, so this is mostly horizontal. Uh, you're getting, you know, this strong animal scent air, but you're hoping that within a few minutes your nose will kind of adjust to it. And you won't really smell it anymore. Who is next? What is that smell? Hmm. Why does it smell like animals in there? Oh, oh no, in there. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, it's not a not a good kind. It's not like not like with bacon or anything like that. No, it's it's like sweaty, furry animal. It's pre-bacon. <laughs> is that is that a new invention? <laughs> So when we encountered... Um, it's a very old invention. <laughs> when, when Bross came back, he did not have uh, any, uh, any of this smell or, or scent to him, correct? No. Okay. Uh, should we wait for Baija to, to, to sneak ahead and, and, do, and say something, or should we just kind of creep behind him? Uh, I, let's creep behind him. I, I think it's probably better that we... We stick together. We're, we're for the most part, I think we're uh, we're, we're capable of handling handling. Okay. Right. Um, I'll, yeah. I'll go behind. I'm I'm happy to go behind. Um, um, I'm also trained in stealth, so I'm I'm trying to be as as quiet as, as possible. All right, I'll uh, I'll take the back because I got the weapons. Okay, I'm happy to be in the middle of this group. All right, so y'all are creeping in there. Sorry, Monty, what was that? Somebody's gonna have to provide light, right? There's no light in there. I wanna uh, take my um, uh, blue crystal. I mean, it's not a lot of light, but at least it's a little bit. I also have this candle that never runs out. Just my oddity, an oddity. So it should be pretty bright between the two of them, maybe? Yeah. I mean, your eyes will adjust well enough to this level of light that you can at least see, you know, 20 or so feet ahead. Okay, that's probably enough if we're trying to be stealthy. I mean, both Karner and I are probably have glow globes, which would be a lot brighter, but um, I can see the advantage in having only a little bit of light. I prefer the darkness anyway. So the first 20 or so feet of this shaft are reinforced with metal, but beyond that, uh, you quickly reach a point where it's just stone walls. And uh, there's no ice here because you've got this influx of hot air, but there is a little bit of snow that is blown in and, and accumulated from outside. So you're kind of like you know, handing and kneeing your way through about half an inch of water in, not everywhere, but often enough that you don't think you're gonna be dry for a while. Uh, you quickly reach a point where the this shaft that you're in, uh, it widens up a bit to about six feet wide and a little bit taller, so it's around four and a half feet high. Uh, Carner's little automaton is has stopped there because you have a choice of going forward or off to the right. Now, according to Cross's map, to get to the lab where he was being experimented on, you want to go forward. You don't know what goes to the right because he doesn't. Is the automaton dead? Is it broken or can I pick it up? Oh, just stop there. It's okay. going to be operative for several hours. It just, you told it to go ahead and it stopped at the intersection. But pick him up, put him on my back and say, you did good, buddy. <laughs> All right, well, so we go to the lab. Yeah. But yeah, the way, the way that we were told to go, let's go that way. All right. Um, after about a couple hundred yards, you start, uh, coming upon some metal plates on the floor that have been kind of bolted or fused to the, the stone exterior or the, the, the tunnel. And up ahead, you can see that there are some there's light coming up through slots in the floor. Okay, um, I will creep up to that and then peer. I'm assuming it's like a, like almost like a grate kind yes. of thing. Yeah, now that you're closer, it's most definitely kind of a... I want to look down into that if there's light there. All right. In fact, I'll, I'll kind of single, I'll, I'll signal for everyone to kind of hang on for a minute so I can go check that out. All right. Okay. You 
creep in and put your eye up to this grate. This is a large room. Uh, this, the strong smell of animals is even stronger here. This seems to be some sort of stable. Uh, there are some kind of crudely, in this large room, there are a bunch of walls that have been kind of crudely built out of salvage and scrap materials, but there are about four or five of these big kind of lizard-like things with big wings and fur all over them, and they're just kind of curled up here in this area. And make a perception roll, please. I am trained in that. Uh, and I roll a 16. Okay. Um, off in the corner, really hard to see from the angle that you're looking at, there is a small table with a couple of warrior-looking people sitting. Um, you can't really tell what they're doing because you can only see them kind of from the feet up to about the bottom of the ribs, but they're sitting at a table. And is this a dead end or or could we keep going? You can keep going right over these grates. They're basically like little one-inch gaps in the floor. And what does our map tell us to do? Keep going forward. Okay. I'll stealthily kind of move backward till I reach uh, my friends and I will say, okay, so there's like some kind of stable with, with some creatures and some guards below it with beneath this grating. But I think we can, for quiet, we can just go over the top and, and ignore it. Sounds good. Uh, we don't have any other way around, right? You just gotta. Think so. Unless you want to go back and go off to the side passage, or you don't know where it goes. This okay. is okay. Well, right. let's uh, let's take it let's take it slow, and let's uh, let's let's try not to make any noise. Yeah, right. we will be as careful as we possibly can. All right, I'd like everybody to uh, make a stealth roll to creep across this thing without making too much noise. Uh, stealth use is. In this case, it'd be a speed. If you wanted to spend, if you wanted to apply any effort from your speed pool, that'd be the one to use. I am going to apply effort. Yeah, definitely, because I'm wearing chain mail and all that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna need that. All right, so that'll cost you, you're wearing chain, but you're trained in. Okay, so that'll be, normally it's three out of your speed pool to apply a level of effort. Okay. What did everybody get? I rolled a 16 with no effort. I rolled a 17 before adding anything. I rolled a three, um, but I'm also trained in stealth. Uh, I'm trained and I used effort and I rolled a 13. All right. So you're creeping along, um, seem to be doing fine. And unfortunately there is a point where Kyrie puts his weight on just the wrong place, and one of these floor panels of this tunnel gives around six inches and goes, <laughs> it makes this loud, squeaky sort of noise there. Um, what do you do? Uh, I step back. <laughs> <laughs> I assume we all just freeze, like instinctively, and listen to see if anyone heard anything. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, you immediately hear the human voices from the room say, what was that? Let's go. And then, hey! <laughs> Do they see us? I mean, can we see that they see us? Or, or, or are we just assuming that they see something? This thing's up, it's hanging a little bit for them. It's, it's hard to see, tell what it looks like from their perspective, but you are in some sort of conduit and the bottom of it has dropped like a couple of inches on one side and made a loud noise. So it seems that they have reacted to that. Um, you'd have to like lay flat and get your eye down to that level to see if they can see you or if they just notice that their home is falling apart. Someone stick your eye in the hole. All right. Uh, I'm so, so uh, Kyrie is is behind me. He's behind you, but he's in, uh, he's in front of Melly. <clears throat> so, uh, Sean, you're going to have to decide if I have time to do this, but what I'd like to do is turn around in this tight place so that I'm uh, I'm looking down through the grate again. I'm assuming I went over the grate? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, and it's, then it's I, not oh, just one place. It's like it's a length of probably fifteen feet of these slots. Oh, okay. So I'm still over part of a grate then. Yes. Okay. So I can. Do I have an idea of where these guards are? Uh, based on your previous look, yes. Okay. Well, do I have an angle if I wanted to drop or throw something at them or their general area? Uh, you could perhaps get it through this little gap that Kyrie's has formed by body weight. Okay, so I will do what I said before. I will kind of turn around so I can go toward the, the gap that he made, and I pull out the cipher, which is an amnesia gas bomb. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to throw it in there. Um, if it works uh, it, and, I, and I get them, they will forget the last minute. All right. Make your attack roll with your cipher. <laughs> okay. Should we all run first? Hmm. I, we can't. He's in front of us. Run. True. Oh, that's sorry. That's okay. We'll, we'll just run really fast. fast. Well, this this part of the the tunnel is a little wider, so you could squeeze past him. <laughs> Should we try it? We're probably gonna make a lot of noise if we do. <laughs> I imagine they'll forget it. And they two more people will have to cross over that that askew bit of the floor that Kyrie's is on. I should not have brought all these heavy books. <laughs> um, <laughs> what was I thinking? I I'm starting to regret my decision. I'm with the murder and the thief and I just brought a bunch of books. This is great. Maybe you can hit them with the books. <laughs> uh, do you want us to try to run really fast or do you want to just throw you safer? Yeah, okay. Uh, if, okay. If you suggest that, I will I will, uh, I will suggest it. Or run or we're crawling. Crawl really fast. <laughs> All right. Um, everybody who's going to try and crawl past this grate, please make a speed roll. If you have I mean, anything uh, like climbing or something like that, that'll apply to this. I uh, I can use effort this time. Me too. <laughs> I rolled a seventeen. Okay. I rolled an eleven. And Kerner? Oh, uh, I was actually considering staying behind in case we needed to fight. Okay. All right, so Kyris and Mali both get past uh, this loose floor panel. And Abijah, if you want to drop that, go for it. I do. Okay. All right, uh, I will use effort. I wish I, I wish I had uh, Shauna's 20 right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't give it to you. Well, um, so I used effort, but I only rolled an eight. So I don't know what what my target is. Okay. I, don't know uh, my target. I mean, you were just trying to get it close to them. Uh, how Do you know what the radius of the gas bomb mm -hmm. is? Immediate. Immediate, okay. Uh, it actually, from your weird angle, you think actually it it hit them. Um, there's a brief moment of like coughing and, and confusion, and then silence. Cool. And the weird lizard creatures, do they forget too? <laughs> you ask them. <laughs> do, do we ask them? <laughs> I, I'll kind of, I, like, we'll, we'll, I guess he'll throw the thing, and we'll just like look through the grate and wait a second. And I look up at, but at Baija and I'm like. <laughs> 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 All right, well, he threw at these uh, these warriors. Uh, they were, looks like they had come over to look up at this panel that you have shifted. <laughs> they with just fell down through it. Right? And now they're just kind of like, and they look at their animals. And then they walk over towards their little table and sit down again. I'll just All right. Like, and we just keep crawling through. Yeah. Get out of there. Carter, I will need you to make a sneak roll. Sneak, yeah. okay. Uh, that's that's also speed. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, so I fucked up. Is that a one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh! All right. First GM in charge of the game. <laughs> So, there should be an award for that. You're saying, oh, this guy is totally fine. And as you put your weight on it, it finally gives. 
Karn is, like, you guys are just walking, and Karn's like, he's the last one through. So, like, I imagine as Abijah turns around and starts walking down the thing, you'd hear a loud, like, clang. So, do you want to try and grab the side of this as you start to fall, or are you hoping that you can land on your feet like a cat? Um, how long do I think that he, did he say that thing lasts for? A minute? <laughs> Well, they, they forget the previous minute. Oh. So it's already done what it's going to do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. Hmm, give me one second here. Grail. Uh, no, that's that's not really a good idea. Uh, I will, I, ah, fuck, I, don't think, I think I'll just have to try and grab the, uh, the ledge. I don't want to fall through. Okay, so go ahead and uh, you could make, this is kind of a quickness, so it's probably speed, but if you wanted to use might, I would just let you kind of brute force grab on and, and keep yourself from falling, but you need to make a roll either way. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and use my might, which probably is gonna make it a bit harder, but. All right, hold on. So if you want to apply effort, then that cost would come out of your might pool. You don't have to apply effort, but if you do. Yeah, no, I'm definitely gonna apply the effort. Uh, can I try to grab him or help in any way, or does that come later? Uh, unfortunately, he is about two people behind you. Actually, three people behind you. Unless you're waiting for everybody to pass you. Remember, they well, So they passed him, and so it was just me and Abijah on either side of this grate. And Abijah turned around and left, and then I had to cross over. And then well, Abijah, then if you want to reach out and try and grab him, then I will let that count as an asset for, for Karna's role. Okay. I will do that. Okay. All right. Uh, so asset gives me plus one. One step, yes. Uh, I rolled a nine. Nine. Okay. So, and you did? Did you apply effort? Uh, yes. So the effort was how many points? Uh, it cost you three. Three. Okay. But you probably have might edge of one, so actually only cost you two. Okay. So, right, so it's a nine with effort and an asset. All right. So you uh, between your own. Uh, yeah, like reflexes and strength and a quick hand from Abijah. Uh, that panel like collapses under your feet, but you manage to go and catch yourself. Oh, shit. <laughs> and now you're kind of back up on the edge, but that panel is now. <laughs> I think it's time to go at this point. Just time to go. Uh, yeah, he'll just, he'll just like, just like kind of squeeze around the side and just like, just go, 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 go. Kyrie, am I now in front of you? Or is, did you move past me? Um, well, I guess we both kind of went forward uh, pretty much at the same time. So I guess I'm in front. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I, I assume we're probably in front, but kind of pretty close at the same location at that point, kind of waiting for the others. Okay. Kinda. Let's go, let's go. Mm-hmm. All right. So you scurry ahead. Do we, can we hear anything from behind us with the guards, or do we just, are we just scurrying so loudly it doesn't matter? Well, are you trying to scurry quietly? Nope. <laughs> I, think that, I think we're done with that. All right, yeah, so. <laughs> the time for stealth is over. All right, so uh, uh, Monty, you know that this conduit, like, gets through this room entirely in about another 15 feet, so presumably once you've gone past that, you won't be making a lot of noise that they can necessarily hear. Okay. Well, let's just so, keep going then. All right. Yes. So you folks scramble ahead, and uh, as you kind of quickly, I mean, you, it's now four and a half feet tall, so you can kind of crouch walk. You're not crawling anymore, but it's still awkward. But you do hear the two soldiers or warriors in that previous room kind of talking like, oh, this place is falling apart. Yeah, what's <laughs> going on here? Well, we'll have to call somebody and, you know, <laughs> tie that back up together because, you know, the beasts are going to stick their face in it. And then by then you're out of range for their conversation, but they do not seem to associate that with intruders. Cool. That's what I was hoping would happen. Uh, as we're going through, uh, Michelle has donated $20. Ask and you shall receive, Monty. You have a nat 20 for yourself. Oh, nice. Thank you. Yay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, we're, we might be getting out of here alive. <laughs> All right, creeping forward some more in, in a dramatic crouch. Uh, you again uh, come to a place on your map that is a T-intersection, and uh, you, if you follow where you're supposed to go, 
you would go straight, but you could also turn left and go into someplace unknown. There's a stronger current of air coming from that side passage than from here. Do we hear anything? Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I don't see any reason to, to deviate from the map, but do we hear anything from from the uh, either the, from the directions we're kind of bypassing? Why don't you make a listen roll, please? Fifteen. Fifteen. All right. It's kind of hard to hear over like there is a machine noise coming from the left. It's kind of hard to hear over that, but you think you hear people talking up ahead. Ahead. In the direction that we are heading. Yes. Okay. Now the good news is now that you have passed that previous room and you're close to the stronger source of air, the animal smell is almost gone. Thank you. <laughs> Can I also hear this machine sound from where we are? Oh yes, yeah. That that machine sound is pretty obvious. It's. And can I identify it? I am trained in both identifying and in machines. Uh, I could. You believe it's probably a fan blowing air. <laughs> That's not exciting. All right, keep moving. <laughs> Fans don't talk very well, so they're not very fun. It's a laser fan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, up ahead, the tunnel makes some twists and turns, goes down a little bit, levels out. And again, you're seeing another one of these areas where there's a grate or several grates in the floor and there's light coming up out of them. Although in this time, after the second or third uh, floor grate panel, there's also a, it's not really a wall grate, but there's an area of the wall that has, it is, the original construction is not there and it's kind of been patched with wood and twine. And it's not like a perfect, perfectly covered area. So there's some gaps in it. Interesting. As we're approaching that, uh, Phyla, Phylavis has donated $45. Isn't that 20s to Monty, Askren, and Bear? Thank you, my friend. Yay! We are going to get me through this dungeon. And Thank I you. promise I will not ruin everything. <laughs> Famous last words. All right. So that's two in that 20s? You have two saved up, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Where am I in that 20s? That's what I want to I don't. Look. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so we, so we came to another section that said you said it was repaired. Uh, yes. A lot of the stuff in the ninth world, because it's so old yeah. and ancient, but it has, you know, perhaps suffered damage in the thousands of years since it was originally created. So whoever has lived here since then, whether that's some of, you know, Warlord Jarg's people or someone from a hundred years ago, there was damage here and it has been kind of patched. It's hard to tell what it is from here. It might be a couple of boards. It might be an old piece of synth or metal that has just been tied up to it. Does the, um, with the map, um, is, is this pretty much a straight shot? Do we see like any kind of details at all of what we might be beside at this point, what might be beyond this wall? Um, or does the path that we're taking at some point ever curve or anything to kind of give us a sense that we need to be going? Yes. Like a rough version of the map that he gave you is this right here. I can't read it. Can you read all those things to me? <laughs> sure. It says, don't read the map. This is for the GM's eyes only. <laughs> but you think actually you're coming up on this area and there is a note on it that it's kind of hard to tell from because he was like sketching stuff from memory but you think this is about guards yeah we don't need any more of those no 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 i'm good we don't like them um so we are now still at, like it's still about four and a half feet high so we're still kind of yes okay Well, I think we keep going, right? Yeah. As we're walking, I'm gonna use I'm gonna pop a cipher my force shield projector just in case we run into a, a place where I need some armor. Okay. Is, uh, uh, we... is it anyone anyone able to kind of keep an ear out for for guard like for activity or movement? Um, I mean, it's probably not bad for us to to continually be listening as much as possible, but I I'm not like. Uh, strained or anything in any particular way for any of that? I am. Yeah. 
I'm assuming that anything that doesn't really require, you know, active concentration to listen, you're you're able to hear it. But if you're like trying to hear a specific thing, like Kyrie's mentioned that he heard voices up ahead. So if Abijah wanted to see if he could right. hear what he's got. Yeah, that's, that's kind of that's just why I wanted to make sure. Great. If if he heard voices up ahead and we look like we're headed toward a place in the map that says guards, we should definitely. I'll I'll definitely listen. What I'm really trying to determine is to get an idea of how many of them there are. Okay, make a listen roll, please. Okay, so uh, I am trained. I'm not going to use any effort, uh, and I only roll a five. Okay, uh, you listen for what, 10, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, a minute? Sure. Okay. 20 seconds. You hear several people speak. Uh, you can tell it's at least three discreet voices. Uh, perhaps more people are there, but definitely at least three. And they are talking, it sounds like they're playing some sort of game of chance. Okay, cool. Um, I will relate that very quietly to my friends and uh... I'll uh, I'll take the lead again, hoping to use my stealth so that we can get into a position to surprise them. I'm assuming we can't get past them, but if there's a way to get past them, I think we should try to do that. All right. That seems smart. All right. So these aren't these aren't like on the other side of this patch wall. These are just something that's kind of coming up still. I think so. I know. I think they're just straight ahead. Well, you want to get closer and, and see. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Sure. But stealthy. Uh, we're, we're all we're all trying to be as stealthy as possible. All right. I guess as he's doing that, Mighty Moose has donated forty dollars. Says I don't know what the weird table is, but I think both Carner and Kyrie should give it a roll. I have no idea what it is either, so I am supremely excited for this. All right. <laughs> I hope it's as good as the the wild magic table. Let's give you a roll. I wish we could see it like a spinner. Oh. <laughs> That'd be awesome. That would be nice. And they're wrecking. Next time, I'll make a I'll, I'll make a graphic for that. <laughs> All right, what are, what are we rolling? Uh, roll percentile, please. Percentile. So that's a this and a this. I rolled a nine. I rolled. A five. All right. Both rolled really low. Yeah, we did. (laughs) That's almost never good. (laughs) So, weird things happen. Uh, (laughs) One, Karner's weird little automaton friend starts to speak in a strange robotic voice. No, no, (laughs) stop it. No. (laughs) (laughs) You're not sure if it's talking in a language you don't know, or if it's just a really, really weird accent. Um, I've never heard it speak before. Did you say a, uh, a weird robotic or erotic voice? Because I heard. I mean, could be either one, depending on who you are. Well, it is both. It is robotic and erotic. That is the weird part, I guess. Yeah. Wait, you're talking back to it. <laughs> and then. Up ahead, near where this, uh, again, the floor grate starts to happen, a little purple light starts to blink on the wall, and then you hear, and then this starts spraying this kind of purple mist into the shaft that you're in. And because there is air flowing from further down towards you, this little cloud of mist is kind of slowly creeping towards you at about one foot per second. It's just, it's an air freshener. It's here to treat for the animal smell. All good. <laughs> it's just not working. Febreze. <laughs> Is it, was that his, was that his role? <laughs> That's both of them. Two different things. Oh, yeah, no, I didn't know if the, I didn't know if the, the, the mist was his thing. Uh, uh, is the robot, is my robot not shutting up or is he just like, is he, is he loud? Is he? It's, it's talking kind of in a normal tone of way. It's not being loud. It's just like, okay. <laughs> And it's not stopping. It's still saying stuff. <laughs> there has can to be an off switch or something. Yeah, can I roll to understand what it's saying? Maybe it's warning us. Sure. <laughs> uh, so I am I'm trained in machines. I'm trained in Numenera. I'm trained in identifying. I don't know if that's useful. Uh, are you, you going to make friends with my robot? 
I'm gonna where, try. Where I can't. Maybe more than friends if he just keeps going without a running stuff. <laughs> he is he is uh, single. I'll level up. Focus is literally talks to machines. <laughs> uh, and I roll a sixteen. Okay. Talking uh, now, it, baby. He, like reciting. It seems like a countdown, but it's alphabetic as well as numeric. <laughs> So he, he's basically making sure he's not drunk. He's doing the alphabet backwards. Is that what's happening? Okay. It's hard to say, but it's like J31. Interesting. H okay. 30. I so 29. I, I don't actually know how to communicate you sunk my with battleship. him. <laughs> All right. Probably like a self diagnostic or something. No. Oh, I guess we're backing out of here somewhat. Come on, shh. Come on, man. <laughs> so I'm assuming. Given the situation with the air current and this passage and everything, there's nothing we can do to avoid this purple mist, right? Well, they can't, but you can walk through walls, so I don't know what your plan is. Okay, so I uh, I do have uh, another cipher, the uh, phase disruptor, that um, uh, I can essentially put up like a ten foot uh, ten foot by ten foot, uh, actually a ten foot cube uh, that goes out of phase. So all of us could essentially walk through walls or whatever. It lasts for an hour. But of course, it's only for a certain area. I was kind of hoping to save it for maybe something a little bit more useful. But if we feel like we need to get out of here, um, you know, we, we might be able to phase into some other place. You know, I could try scanning it and seeing if it's dangerous first. Unless somebody else has a better great idea. I, I have nothing I can I can do here, so. Okay. Right, so I'm gonna... <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is not my area of expertise. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to scan it. Um, I scan, uh, and I, what I learned on a scan, I, I pop my buttons and I do my thing, and I scan. Um, so scanning a creature or object always reveals its level, and I learn whatever facts the GM feels are pertinent about the matter and energy in that area. Okay. Uh, well, then you understand that this mist is level three, and it has narcotic qualities to it. <laughs> okay. So we kind of stay in here then. <laughs> is this the acid trip part of the dungeon? <laughs> That's all I know is narcotic. I don't have any other. I mean, it, narcotic is pretty broad, but it could be like a numbing sort of thing. It could be like just uh, like a, a euphoric happiness sort of drug. Do I think I it's like happy. dangerous? <laughs> it doesn't seem harmful. Okay. I will I will relay the narcotic qualities and the fact that it, it whatever it does it doesn't seem like it's gonna harm us. I mean it might, you know, put us off our game a little bit, but that seems Yeah, we tough it out. Yeah, that seems doable, right? I tie a bandana around my face. Alright. Yeah, so I'll do my best to hold my breath. Alright, so everybody as this comes rolling through uh, the area of the tunnel that you're in, please make a might defense roll. So I also have a I have a blanket around my face, but this blanket hums pleasantly while covering a living creature, so it's probably humming. <laughs> you guys have probably seen this before, so it doesn't surprise you, I doubt. Like, no. I'm taking my nat twenty. Me too. <laughs> Actually, you know, we do have that. I think I'm gonna undo my roll. I'm gonna take the twenty as well. <laughs> None of us don't want the narcotics. I am. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take the risk. <laughs> All right, roll it. Somebody had to. What am I rolling? D twenty. So my my defense roll. Mike, got it. Eighteen. Eighteen. Well All right. Done. So between holding your breath and closing your eyes and covering your mouth, this weird purple mist just kind of flows past you and smells weirdly sweet. Um, but then it it's better really than the animal smell. You. And you do not seem to have uh, experienced any negative effects from it, guys. I do harder, I do harder stuff than this before breakfast. Come on. <laughs> All right. Well, that was interesting. So, uh, a, a twenty, a natural twenty, gives us a oh, right. special right. effect, right? Perfect. Yes. So what I would like uh, is if there's any way for there to be any kind of positive effect from the narcotic, I would like that. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm sure I agree with your version of positive, so I'm going to wait until you do this before I... 
Uh, yes, because it is a narcotic, it means it's good at helping you like ignore pain. So let's say that the next time you take damage, you can reduce the might damage by one point. Cool. I want me. Some, I want some of that. No, nope, you can do it too with your natural twenty. And so you can reason you want. Or you can just, yeah, just breathe, breathing like, oh, that's deeply. Good, that's good. <laughs> then you're getting out like a plastic bag and trying to. It's <laughs> free basing. <laughs> Uh, I guess for for mine, then I would want something similar but slightly different. Um, I guess for me, I'm, I'm kind of hoping the effect uh, allows me to uh, focus my mind and intensify. So the next time I do da I do damage, I'm able to inflict a little bit of extra damage, an mm. extra point of damage, or whatever. It's kind of the reverse, I would say. But I will say that you have a bit of clarity from this this drug. And in the same way that you're like, wow, my hands, I can see, you know, my fingerprints. It doesn't seem like it'll last long, but yes, you do have this intensity of focus in your gaze that you think would be helpful in striking someone in a damaging way. Let's go kill someone. <laughs> <laughs> Murder. <laughs> All right. I'm pretty sure we found each other in a prison, didn't we? I can tell. <laughs> Yeah, found each other. <laughs> or like, I worked in the library. Each other. <laughs> All right, so there's this uh, this great area up ahead, a repaired area, and presumably some guards. And you're getting closer to it now. So I I just need a little bit more clarification. So I, this is another area where we're going to be crawling over. Yes. And and keep on going. Yes. But the map mixes and the voices make it sound like they're guards. Yes. Okay. They were in front of us. Okay, so did I. So let's try to sneak past them then. All right. Um, if you're all sneaking, please make stealth rolls. Bear in mind, this is the hastily repaired conduit part. Now, the hastily repaired part is on the side wall. It's not the floor. Oh, okay. That's, that's slightly better. And there are some of these grates on the side as well, so you're... Kind of All right. So I'm applying effort, and I am trained in uh, stealth, and I roll a 15. I didn't apply any effort, and I rolled a 19. Okay, good roll. Uh, I used effort, and I'm trained, and I roll a 13. Uh, no effort. I got a 15. All right. Nice job, everybody. Uh, you quietly kind of pros at this point through here, and. Now that you're up close and you can see through these horizontal and, and horizontal and vertical grates, this conduit passes through probably what is an upper corner of a room, and there are several people, humans, uh, playing some sort of card game there. Uh, but they don't notice you even as you pass by this one panel that was destroyed and has kind of been haphazardly repaired with just some scrap. Just quietly working along there get on by nobody seems to react to your presence so what kind like so the cards are like uh, spread out on the table or in their hands um does is there like a stack of cards or whatever no yeah. no <laughs> no just keep going <laughs> i mean it's like a pile of shit in the middle too is it isn't okay. Kyrie's a robot um i i i'm i am part uh Part non-human, yes. I, I have plenty of synthetic parts here and there. And um, okay, I was just are you are you a gambling robot? Is this is this a thing? <laughs> I am not a gambling robot, but you know I I do have a bit of a mean streak. And uh, uh, okay, I, I I walk on by. I I, I I keep the idea to myself for the next time we walk by them. But I am I will I will leave them alone. Okay. Cool. Remember the uh, the the doctor of cri uh, crystals and pain. We're not here for cards. We're here for that. Right. <laughs> Both. But these Play guys are on the way back. All right. So you've gotten past this guard area. We keep going. And the tunnel kind of curves a bit, goes up and down a little bit, and finally, finally, the. Uh, the ceiling of it raises up to around six feet, so you can stay pretty tall. And not long after that, there is 
a vertical shaft. Your, your map just says keep going straight, but you notice up above you is an area leading up. Does the shaft also keep going straight? Yes, the, stat, the shaft goes straight, your map says go straight, and then there's this upward thing. Is there any light? Like, does it seem like it goes all the way to the surface, or? Uh, it's dark after the radius of your, the lights that you're bringing. I don't know, okay. things with wings live in places like that. You know, we don't really want to go up there. So, uh, I, can, I can climb, climb up if you want. <laughs> I have yes. something for you, Monty. All right, I take the XP. <laughs> As you are looking up there, uh, something lands on your face. <laughs> you know, that almost never turns out to be a good thing. Except that one time. <laughs> yeah, that one time was good. What? What? Can we see what it is? Yeah, you just first you see it, but you go, ah, and like. And he kind of turns, and in the light, you see there's some sort of weird, like, greenish crystalline bug that has landed on his face and is, like, kind of creeping toward his eye. And then, <gasps> as, as literally a second later, another one lands on his head. And then more start to fall from this vertical shaft. Where all of you are. <laughs> Can I, like, yank him out of the shaft yeah, so he doesn't get covered? I want to get out of would like all of you to make initiative rolls, please. Oh, fantastic. All right, let me, uh, let me put on some initiative music. I'm going to apply a level of effort. Uh, where was initiative? Oh, I have, uh, I have initiative trained. All right. Nice. So it's just like any kind of speed-based task, but you're trained in it. Okay. Uh, well, I got uh, I got a ten. All right. Bear. Four. Four. Oh. <laughs> Shauna. Uh, I played a level of effort and I got an eleven. Eleven. Guys, I think we found both the crystals and the pain. <laughs> and Monty. Uh, I used a level of effort and I rolled a thirteen. All right. Well, fortunately, uh, your reflexes are all better than these little bug things, so I'm gonna let y'all go first. And you can choose uh, whichever order you want to act. I just, I wanna get out of that shaft and get this thing off my face. All right. Uh, so you can easily just move, you know, at immediate distance. Why don't you make a speed defense roll, or if you prefer a might defense roll, just to kind of like get these things off you. <laughs> Um, yeah, this sounds like another fantastic use of a nat 20. Because <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't want bugs on me, so. Um, did anyone else have bugs on them yet? No, you were the one who like stopped and looked up. And so they all noticed them on you and you're the first target. Okay. Um, so I get a special effect with a nat 20, right? So uh, what I'd like to do is, is, as I'm getting out of the way and out of that shaft, I'd like to not only move forward, but but uh, I believe Kyrie is, Kyrie is next behind me. And I'd, if, if possible, I'd just like to grab his arm and pull him quickly through there so nothing falls on him too. Kyrie, do you let him pull you? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And yes, you've been yanked out of the yeah, way of this thing. Who's next? Uh, so how many of the of them are here? Uh, well, there were initially the two that landed on Abijah, but there are, you know, more kind of following, like blink, blink, blink. So so far, probably there are fifteen or so that'll land on the ground. Oh, oh, it's getting it's getting crazy in here. <clears throat> We should just get oh, out of here, I think. Yeah. I think it's time to just go. But that's always seems to be my answer, so. Yeah, if we can move forward and pass them, and then if uh, a few of them are still being a pain in the ass, we can then deal with them individually instead of, you know. 
Well, Abijah and Kyrie are past this shaft that they're falling from. And now there are a bunch on the floor and Meli and Karner would have to get past those on the floor and perhaps any others that might fall from. So I'm, I'm just saying, come on guys, let's just get out of here. All right. Uh, I'm just going to try to run through. Okay. Why don't you make a uh, speed defense roll to dodge whatever's falling from up above? Uh, I'm going to apply a level of effort and I'm going to roll a four. Four. Okay. <laughs> um, you run through uh, and none of them get on you. Wow. I made it. <laughs> Carter, what about you? I guess I'm going to have to sort of back up a little bit and take like a diving roll over these uh, these crystal things and try to get to the other side because I don't want any of them on me. That sounds like panache. <laughs> it, it's, yeah, that's all about the panache. Um, that wouldn't be, I, that wouldn't be that skill. Uh, that would just be a speed skill, right? So, uh, yeah. If you want to make like a, if you have like trained in jumping, I'd let you apply that. I've trained in running. That's why I was going to say this is, I don't think this is going to apply. You think it would? Uh, it would? Yeah, I totally would. Sure. Uh, and then I guess I'll apply a level of effort because why? All right. You don't even need to make a roll. Sweet. Come so, on over. Your, between your effort and your fast running, you just kind of dodge between these falling bugs, kind of deflect one with your hand as it almost lands in your fancy hat. And <laughs> my, my, it's a uh, metal hat because we're oh. in the future. Um, so, okay. So, yeah, he'll kind of dodge you know, dive over these creatures and roll and it's gonna look back and be like Crystal, not good. Nope. So Malie and Karner, did you wanna do like a, a full move out to a short distance? Or did you wanna just get past this vertical shaft and stop? Is Abai did has Abijah all and uh Kairi moved down the shaft? Or are they right here? Uh their action was to jump a little bit. Um they're you know, they're about ten feet down. We're gonna, yeah. As far as we I don't can. Wanna, I don't want to push past them, but I will. I will go as close to them as I can. All right. Uh, the the last two to cross do notice that these bugs have kind of landed on the ground, and more of them are landing, and they're kind of creeping toward you like a swarm. Do uh, they fly? No, they're on the ground. They just were falling. I I don't know if this if I'll need another turn for this, but I do have I do have some some daggers and some training in these. Uh, can I pry the thing off of uh, Abijah's face? Oh, he got that off. Oh, yeah. okay. I, I thought it was still attached. No, it's fine. There's oh, none okay. on anybody right now. They're just all kind of in the storm behind you. That was part of him using his natural, one of his natural 20s was to oh, do sweet. that and then pull us through. Um, uh, <clears throat> so I have a detonation device. Uh, <laughs> but it's going to be a lot of noise. <laughs> I, have, I have that too. <laughs> it's a, a gravity detonation. Oh, I'm holding it in my hand. What do you guys think? <laughs> I, have a, I have a sonic detonator. Okay, okay I'll, I'll put it away. I'll put it away. <laughs> You're not supposed to try to murder us, Carries. No, no, we're, we've had we're, this conversation multiple up. times. <laughs> we could back up a little bit, and then we can take care of these guys. Do we, do we need to fight them? Do you, do you really do want to throw a grenade in a ventilation chair? <laughs> yeah. No. Great idea. <laughs> No, technically <laughs> it's a gravity detonation. So that one is just gonna like push yep. them all together and crush them. No. Nope. Wouldn't like necessarily have blowback like a DD fireball would. Do, do you think do you guys do we actually need to fight these things or can we just move? Are they slow or fast or what? You think you could outwalk them? <laughs> yeah, let's just let's just then go. uh someone else's problem. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Abijah, did they bite you or anything? Like, yeah. Are you, you, are you good, man? No. Okay. I think I'm. I think I'm fine. Okay. Because yeah, the last guy we 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 saw turned into crystal and then broke. Well, yeah. I, I don't think that was because he got bit by a bug, though. I mean, it might have been. <laughs> They're crystal bugs. I don't know, man. This is not my 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 area of expertise. So we're gonna keep an eye on Abijah just in case. But... Yeah. He's probably, he's probably good. Okay. Probably wise anyway. <laughs> Let's just keep going. Look, yep. if you turn Onward. into a crystal guy, I probably will say I told you so. Okay. You can say that to my pile of dust. <laughs> All right. All right, what's ahead? 
mm-hmm. out walking these bugs. I've seen this movie. I don't think they uh, they still catch up to us. I know how it works. <laughs> that is a good point. They, I mean, assuming they keep walking and and you stop, they might catch up to you at some point. <laughs> they don't you know, lose track of you. Onward. All right. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're gonna keep going down the shaft. Let someone else deal with this thing, this problem. All right. Janitors um, or whatever. So, keep moving forward. Up ahead, you notice the air is starting to get kind of foul. Like foul like it was before, or foul in a different way? Foul in a more chemical sort of way. Hmm. Hmm. Can I identify is, that? Is the air current still coming? Are we still going against the air current? It's still, yes. I mean, it's, it's a little slightly different every time you hit one of these cross passages because sometimes there seems to be like air coming from another direction uh but right now it is slowly kind of blowing in your face as you move forward all right i'll hold the map up to kairis's candle thing again um just to check it to see what we're coming up on next uh there up ahead there is a another t intersection or like kind of a y intersection where you will go to the right and then off to the left you don't know okay then we just keep going. Yep. When we get to that intersection, I guess it's, it'll be interesting to find out if the chemical smell is coming from the other way or this way. So the chemical smell is getting stronger. But we keep okay. going until we get to that Y intersection, if we can. Yeah. Well, before you get to that point, you're actually going to you start kind of feeling like irritated in your nose and your throat. Uh, so I need everybody to make a mic defense roll. All right. 12. Five, okay. I'm trained and I got a 13. Okay. And Carter? Coming up. Uh... Uh, I'm trained in this and I have a 12. Okay. Uh, so everyone seems to be doing okay, except for Malie, who apparently got a bad lungful of this stuff that seems kind of poisonous. Kind of poisonous. Kind of poisonous. Excellent. It's yeah, like a little so, bit. Just... <laughs> so far, all it's doing is just kind of like making your eyes wide and your throat itch, but you seem to be particularly sensitive to it. Mm. Well, Monty, you need to give away one of those intrusion XP to somebody else. Oh, right. Uh, I was going to give it to Bear uh, for his restraint and not do whatever crazy ass thing he was going to do in the garden. <laughs> Leave it to the thief to keep all the XP for himself. <laughs> uh, can I try to identify this uh, toxic fume sure. while we're walking? Uh, I'm trained in identifying, so I think I don't think the scan's going to help with a scent okay. unless it's like there's particles in the air, which there might be. Um, so I was going to try, try to use my training. Okay. Um, and I roll a 13. Uh, you think this is some sort of fumigation thing? Hmm. Hmm. So it's not designed to poison us, we just happen to be in the wrong. We happen to be in an air shaft, yes. Okay. It's probably designed to poison the uh, crystal creatures. Oh, yeah. I wonder if it works. Oh, good. Maybe yeah. that will mean they'll quit following us then. Mm-hmm. So, Shauna, for now, um, I'm going to give you a one step penalty on uh, speed based actions and on perception checks just because of this, this effect on you. Damn. I'm sorry, did you say speed based and perception tests? Yes. All right, so you get up to the Y intersection, and uh, the the left side of the Y, which is the side that you're not supposed to go down, the smell of this uh, chemical is stronger coming from there. Yeah, good. Let's not go that way, then. Mm-hmm. Let's go the other way. <laughs> Let's go the other way. It's working, even on Sean. <laughs> I know. All right, so you proceed past that intersection and within 10 or 15 feet, the air is just gets so much better because the air is again blowing in your face. And so it is bringing you fresher air upstream of where this 
this chemical is coming from. Shawnee, you're still suffering the effects of it, but you think it'll be over it soon. Cool. All right. And up ahead, the uh, thing makes a, a sharp turn and brings you to another T intersection, except this time you are you are coming up like this, and so now you have a choice of going to left or right. Um, in the right direction on your map, there is a question mark and something about upper level question mark. Not really sure, um, but it seems that Gross's actual path would take you to the left. So looking ahead on the map, where does this map actually lead us? Does it lead us to where the people are being held, a prisoner? Yes, that is where Grop started, uh, Gross started, and then apparently made his way into this ventilation shaft and, and creeped out. Okay, and then I think we should keep going that way. Yeah, I agree. I think we're just going to follow the map all the way until we get there. And okay. so that should, should take us to uh, prisoners anyway. That, that's our understanding? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, they'll probably have a good idea of what's going on here. That's kind of what I was thinking, too, is at least it gives us a little bit more information before having to, you know. Yeah. All right. So you turn left. Yeah, do we get yeah. a sense from the map about, like, have, are we halfway there? Are we three quarters? You're about we... halfway there, yeah. You're getting much closer. Okay. I think basically, uh, unless we see something really out of the ordinary, we're going to just follow the map every chance we... Well, yeah. speaking of which, um, <laughs> there is a place up ahead on the wall where... There are a bunch of these kind of pale greenish crystals that seem to be coming out of a metal plate in the wall. It's almost like if you had like a garden full of planters and those planters were growing crystals, except they're on the wall instead of on the floor. Do they look like the crystals of, of um, Grost, Frost, Frost? They are the same color, um, but it's hard to tell if they're exactly the ones. Hey, can we stop here, you guys, so I can scan these real quick? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, just right. careful, because remember, crystals and pain. It's not yeah. Working. I don't I don't like either of those things that much, but I do want to make sure that, they, you know, maybe we can learn something from them. Right, no, no, I'm just saying, be, just scan them. Yeah, no, just be careful. It's not, or, right. it's not crystals or pain. Oh, you know, I'm, so, I'm tr so I'm trained in botany. Does this help? Uh, go ahead and make a roll. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to scan. I'm trained in identifying and botany and the new manera. And what's the range of the scan? Um, is it an immediate uh, distance? Or is it close? Sorry, let me look it up. Um, I think it's short. Short range. Huh. I have to be in short range. Okay. And I rolled, I don't know, if it's a nine. All right, and you're trained, you said? Well, I, so I'm scanning and I'm trained in identifying botany and Numenera. I'm sure at least one of those, maybe two, are helpful, right. depending on what it is. Uh, so you realize that these are uh, individual machines, multiple individual machines that are <gasps> resting in little apertures in the wall. Ooh. And uh, they are level three. And they seem to have some sort of diagnostic function. Oh. Can uh, are they? Can I tell if they, are they working? Uh, like, they are seem they, to have power. And so, so are they operating right now? Do I think? It seems that they are kind of in like a sleep mode. Oh, and they have a diagnostic function. It sounds like they must be an alarm, or something like it. Hmm. Oh, I was thinking like health diagnostic, but you might be right. Is there any is there any electronics connected to them? Uh, the the big metal panel that they are in, Sean, you would know that the power that these things have, they this, it seems to be like a charging station for them. Ah, I see. 
do you, so I do can you, activate these. Do you know if it's wired into like any other systems or is it just by itself? Do I know that? Probably not without further. I mean, it's connected to something because the the wall panel is not a power source all by itself. I now I'm I know you and him have a relationship now. You have a rapport. Um, if I give you Mr. Roboto, can you, I don't know, maybe he can help with this? Can you plug him into the wall and maybe he can do something? Well, what would probably be more helpful is, I mean, I'm a nano as well. Um, and Right, but you're uh, not as cute. I, I'm not nearly as cute. <laughs> I am not. It's all um, that blood. <laughs> yes, but I, I, in addition to the blood, I am also specialized in Numenera. Oh, so excellent. So I could actually give you, or you could give me either way, um, uh, an asset. And so, you know, maybe you and I together go up closer up to explore this thing and see see if, we, if it's something that we need to disable or if it's something that we can uh, salvage or take something from or make use of in any kind of way. Um, but, you know. Yeah, I, let's do that. I think we need to get closer up to it. Harris, right. do you have scan? Um, I have sense magic, so it's obviously a much lighter version of that. Um, you know, it pretty much just tells me if something's Numenera or not. And you've already very quickly identified that it's ah. something that is uh, of the Numenera. So, cool. Isn't my my Lee? Don't you have some kind of ability to like turn these things on or off or something? I do. Yeah, I have distant activation, um, which means I can activate or deactivate them within short range without touching them. Um, but I have to understand the function of the machine and it can't be connected to another intelligence or be intelligent itself. And I don't know, I don't quite know the function and I don't know if it's connected to something larger. Uh, maybe with my assistance, since you've already looked and already gotten some sense of it, um, uh, I will assist you then that we can maybe do another, another attempt to look at this a little bit further and get a sense of whether we this is something that would be useful for you or not. Yeah, let's try that. Um, okay. So, so I am so I'm trained in machines now that I know it's a machine, and Numenera and identifying, which might be probably not as useful now. And then, um, Kyrie's is going to help me. And I, what are we? What are we exactly trying to figure out, Kyrie? We want to know if it. Um, I guess in my mind, it's if we, we probably first of all want to figure out whether this is something that we need to deactivate or not. Okay. Um, and do we feel like there's uh, is there something of danger or an alarm or a risk that we are going to trigger and by deactivating it we can we can safely get by? Okay, cool. Um, I might as well apply a level of effort too, since I've got lots of intellect, and I roll a fifteen. Right. And so you've moved up closer to these things to examine them and, and the panel that they're attached to. Yes, I do not like to touch them though close enough to be able to inspect but because she can use the, the activation ability at a short range we obviously would try to you know minimize the amount that we have to get up there all right uh, so you're uh kind of looking at how these things work and getting a sense of what the panel does and as you do that uh there are there are nine of these crystal things sticking out of the wall um, all nine of them pop completely out of the wall and then orient themselves like this. You see that the, the backside that stuck into the wall that was stuck in the wall is basically a hemisphere of metal with some sort of intricate pattern on them. And so now the crystals are kind of like rising up out of the top, almost like a weird little cactus. Mm -hmm. So now these nine of these things and they just kind of like slowly or spin and, and orbit for a couple of seconds and then one of them goes up to each of you and just kind of like hovers near you. And the other five just go back into the wall and and lock themselves in place again. If, if I wasn't so terrified, I'd say these would make awesome interior design pieces. <laughs> <laughs> and you see that the little crystals, like some of them are lighting up in different patterns and, 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 and different frequencies and, and, and strengths of illumination. Um, you're getting a sense of this is part of their diagnostic ability. Uh, they seem to be doing some sort of scan on each of you. I'm the scanner here. What are you doing, mm -hmm. machine? 
I'm guys, just, guys, this is weird. Kyrie. This is weird. <laughs> I'm looking at Kyrie's and Mali and just giving. What are you doing? <laughs> do, do I do I do I stab it? I'm like holding uh, my I'm holding like my sword uh, glaive thing. Like, so do I, do I stab it? What else did we look? Did we learn anything, or they just act like they just activated somehow? Uh, I mean, they activate. You're not sure if it's from your proximity or from what you were trying to do, but they oh. just seem completely active right now. Okay. Uh, they seem to be scanning you. Okay. Uh, they're not. They're not like fixed in place. Like they're kind of not necessarily orbiting you, but just kind of like moving around in proximity of your body. As if you're trying to scan. Like if they if if they only scan about like a foot square, you get the impression that they're kind of like sweeping over your entire body to do a conference. Can I use can I use the 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 bottom of my like my sword and staff thing to just push it away? Sure. Um, you don't even need to make a roll for that. Yes. It's not yeah. even trying to resist you. It's, you get, like hitting it hard or just gently. No, pushing? I'm just putting the the butt against it and just pushing it away. <laughs> All right. So it gets pushed back around five feet and kind of spins itself a little bit askew, and then it stabilizes itself and just. Comes drifting back to you and to resume what it was doing. Oh, so I'm not very good at talking to people, but I'm gonna say I think I think they're, you know, mm, uh, come figuring it out who we are, what we are. Like just let them let them do this for a minute, and we'll see if we'll see what happens. <laughs> it's super reassuring. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not better. <laughs> um, I, I guess I should try to. We, we uh, Kyrie, should we, should we figure out what they're doing? Can we figure that out? I'm. So while it's kind of floating near me, I'm gonna see if I can just grab it. Grab. You got it. <gasps> Man, it doesn't seem to resist you. Like, are you gonna try and move it around? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it's like I'm holding it right now. It doesn't feel like it's it's fighting me or anything. It has a small amount of inertia, almost like you're trying to move like a gyroscope. Sure. But it's not like I have to go and drag this thing from here to here. And it's not hot or cold or it doesn't feel like it's tingly. It is cold. Okay. Not like freezing cold, but colder than you would expect it. Sure. I'll go ahead and let it go, um, but I'm tempted to kind of take it with us. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I have some pockets that I'm going to be able to slip in. I have, you know, uh, long, dark uh, uh, clothing, plenty of places to kind of stick things in. So uh, I'm not doing that yet. I am just saying right out loud to the rest of you, <laughs> to, to maybe take this with us. Well, they say that the first step is admitting that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kairis, do you, do you, like, did you, what did it feel like? Do you, do you have a better sense of what it's doing? I have no idea. It's cold, and it, uh, it it obviously has some motion to it, but uh, beyond that, I don't know. So, Millie, you notice that the one that's paying attention to you, if that's what's actually happening, seems to be spending a lot of time, like, near your, like, from your neck up. And it's like, weird little pulses of light. For everybody else, it kind of just does this, you know, up and down. Oh, I see. No, I see how it is. Yeah. It just kind of waits nearby. And doesn't ah, I, I, yeah. think it, I think it likes you. I can't tell if it's trying to figure out who I am or if it's, you know, giving me a chemical peel or what's going on here. Um, Say hi. Yeah, I Introduce wish I could yourself. Actually, it doesn't seem to speak very much. Um, um, boy, this is my expertise and I'm at a loss with these crystal things. I think that we, I think we just bring them with us like if they're going to come with us or you know we keep walking by this device and see if they either return to their base we, or they end up just, in Kyrie's pocket i'm gonna i'm gonna try to do that sean i'm gonna just gonna move just keep going a good like 20 feet past them does does my little pal come with me okay okay well i'm gonna name mine <laughs> as we <laughs> I'll name it them all. Are you? Are you? It doesn't seem to be locked in a fixed position relative to you. It's just kind of like, almost like pulling a balloon along. It's just kind of like, I'm nearby. <laughs> but it's definitely following you. And there's okay. one that's following Kyrie's. It seems to make noises. Not so far. <laughs> yeah. Mine just keeps drifting like slightly in front of my face, so I just keep pushing it back. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 
Um, okay, so now we have pets. <laughs> I'm look. I'm not saying that this is this is terrifying, but um, normally I'd be fine with this, except for the name of the dude who we're here to fi- find, not making me feel at ease. I will point out that there are four of these little apertures in the wall now that are empty, which mm-hmm. you actually could tear apart and see if there's any ciphers or anything interesting in there. So, um, actually what I'm going to do, because uh, um, because we are kind of, you know, we, we see that they are starting to follow, I'm going to uh, go back to, to that uh, space. I'm going to uh, grab the one that's around me and I'm going to try to put it back into place. Okay, uh, you grab. And you put it into a little socket, and then you let go. Sure. All right. And it goes, whoop, and it just starts hanging around near you again. You're keeping it from its life's purpose. Hmm. That's OK. Um, so sure, yeah, I, I, I'll uh, then investigate, I guess, the socket, um, however that's. I'll, I'll help you. Sure. If you want to salvage stuff, go ahead and make a salvage roll. Do we want to salvage or do we want to just look at it? Like, I don't know if we want to start wrecking this thing. Yeah. <clears Let's throat> just... I guess I'm more interested is it doesn't actually look like there is something be something of value here to salvage. Um, I know for me, I, I popped a cipher. So if we're finding some additional ciphers, I certainly don't mind that. But um, really only if it, I'd like to investigate first to be able to feel like I, I feel confident that it's worth it. Doing yeah, there's, there's some sort of Numenera back there. Yeah. Whether it relates to controlling this thing or charging it or, do, who knows, but there's definitely technology back there. Do you want to reach your hand in? Sure. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll dig in. Okay. I mean, from this side, it looks very much kind of like a reverse of the, the hemispherical bottom of these crystal things. It's just this hemispherical little space and some intricate markings on it that might be code or might be you know a magnetic coupling or a wireless charging mechanism nope cool Kyrie, uh, do you want me to try to deactivate it before you stick your hand in it nah. <laughs> i don't know why i asked you always said that but all right um so i'm giving you a roll what you want all right. Um, again, I'm specialized in the Numenera. Um, so that matters much of it's here. But uh, I roll a six. Six. All right. Uh, you kind of pry at the corner of this thing for a bit, and, and eventually you manage to get part of a section of it popped open. And there's some bits and pieces inside. And after poking around for a while, you think, oh, this thing is kind of interesting. And you retract this. Uh, this device that's about as big as your forearm, and uh, it seems to be some sort of cipher. And you think that you could use it to, uh, you'd affix it to a weapon, and that weapon would, every time it hits something, it would like momentarily increase the density or the gravity or something like that on the weapon, increasing the damage that the weapon does. So suddenly the weapon would hit a lot harder. Okay. Um. Cool. Uh, anything else? Um, we could salvage two shins. Okay. Um, five shins. Cool. Um, so, who is short on ciphers? I think this obviously sounds like a good one that would probably be good for um, uh, Karner because um, he's or uh, um, uh, uh, Abijah. Uh, I assume you're also probably weapon based. Either one of you probably would benefit from something like this. Uh, I mean, I can use all weapons. I can use any kind of weapon. Well, this, well, this is not a weapon in itself. This augments your weapon. Oh, well then, uh, I can attach it to my weapon. I have a whole bunch. Or if someone else wants a weapon, I have weapons you can attach it to, you know. I'm just, I'm just like a weapon guy. Well, you know that if you attach this to a weapon, uh, it'll increase the weapon's damage by two for 28 hours. Ooh. Yeah, let's go ahead and put it. Uh, I'll go ahead and give it to Kerner. Let's let's go ahead and have him use it. Um, if if need be temporarily, if he are, if he's already at his cipher limit, we can swap so he can put this on. Yeah, momentarily it would not be a 
a dangerous risk to have that many cybers on you. I'm gonna I'm gonna take it and like I have a sword staff and it's like a staff with like a, a kind of um what's what's that, what's that kind of that's uh, Egyptian sword, the Kopesh. It's got like a <laughs> Kopesh blade on the top. So he's gonna like screw it in right behind the blade. So it kind of like charges the blade. All right, cool. Yeah, it feels kind of weird as you swing it. it. Like the density yeah. is a little weird, but yeah, like you do a couple of tests, like taps on the wall and you're like, oh yeah, I can feel that's hitting a lot harder than I'm yeah. actually. It's like, oh, this is, uh, this is pretty cool. I'm a... Uh... I'm gonna stab some doctor with this. Um, so I guess we're probably moving from here, but I'm gonna see if I can take my little floating guy and stick it into a pocket if he stays there or if it tries to come out. Okay. Um, if you put it into a loose container, it frees itself. Okay. We need tighter pockets, clearly. Yeah, I, apparently. I mean, and it's fairly big. Like the bottom half of it is like a softball size, and then the top half is roller crystal to come out. So it's not like you can stick it in your pants pocket and easily walk around. Yeah, I got big pockets. Murderers usually do. Yeah. Um, okay, so I guess we move on. Yeah. Yes, you move on. And so, following your map, uh, you get to. Uh, a passage that you think should bring you to where the prisoners are being held. Cool. Is there, and so what do we see? A door, a window, like what do we? Uh, so again, you come up to another section of this grating, uh, similar to where the guards were, there is a, a section of the, the wall of this uh, passage that you're in that has been torn open. Unlike the guard section, it is open and has not been patched. So I'm listening um, just to see if I, if we hear anything coming up, um, you know, any sound of people or whatever, commotion. A, a listen check, please. A nine. All right. Uh, you hear like somebody moaning. Sounds like they're kind of in pain. We expected. How far of a drop down is it? Uh, if you creep close enough to see, you're in a, a very large room uh, with a very high ceiling. You're kind of coming up about probably around six or seven feet off the ground. Oh, that's not fair. Uh, this area, you can look at it, is a mostly roundish sort of room. There are three large clusters of crystals in this room. And by large, I mean, you know, 10 or 15 feet tall in some cases. Again, with, with like fixed into a metal thing on the ground. Uh, there are a bunch of people that are chained to uh, like some sort of simple cot or bed, multiple of these, and uh, some Numenera panels and two big holes in the ground uh, where the floor, like the, the synth and metal of the floor, has been torn up. Uh, it's very warm in here. Uh, there's a lot of heat coming from this space in the floor. And you see several of these little kind of flying crystal metal things that are following you are bebopping around in this room. Do we see a regular door out of here? Yes, but not from this, uh, not from the ventilation shaft that you're in. No, I understand, but like if we were in the room, there's a door out. Yes, there is. There's uh, at least two that you can see from here. Does it look like the ventilation shaft, if we kept going, would take us to one of the areas on the other side of the door? Um, I mean, potentially yes, but that's not indicated on your map. This is about the end of your map. Like there's a pace that leads off in another direction, and then there's an axon. The, if, the, if the the shaft is going straight, are the doors like on the sides of it, or are they sort of in line with the shaft? So if this is the round room, yeah. and you're coming in from this side, there are a couple of doors over on this side. But from your angle, there might be other doors here that you can't see, but there are two definitely doors on the opposite sides of the room. Okay, fair enough. Has the shaft been kind of curved or straight? Uh, I mean, it's mostly been straight, but it does, you know, take a sharp turn now and then. 
All right. That actually did occur. Uh, so I'm going to uh, move forward. Uh, I realize that I'm moving off of our map. Um, you guys should do whatever you, you want to do, maybe to deal with the prisoners, but I'm going to go see if there's a way. Uh, because I mean, even if we go to go down into that room, then we're locked in the room with the prisoners. So I'm going to see if there's a way to get to the other side. So like one of these doors can get opened up because, well, actually, I guess I should ask, we're not going to try to bring all these prisoners up through, the, through shaft. the shaft. Probably not. That's probably not going to work. No. Do you want me to? Uh, I think so. If we leave the shaft, I mean, there's pretty, we're pretty much not, we're not going back up base is what like the way I, I see it. I don't think so. So, of like, is it possible for you to get back in there? No, no, I, I'm assuming we could. I, I have rope and, like, I have an explorer's pack. I know we probably could, but I'm saying practically, like, once we're out of the shaft, there's probably not going to be a good reason for us to go back into it, especially if we have prisoners. So if you if you want to go sneak ahead and scout, we can deal with the prisoners, and then you can okay. just come back. Mostly all I want to do is find out if there's a way to get on the other side. On the other side of the door? Okay. Yeah, even if there's even if there isn't a grating, um, I will use my uh, phasing power to phase partially through and see if I can see, Stick or even all, down through, or even all the way through. I might have to go all the way through before I can see anything actually. So you're just going to try and loop around to the other side and then come out there near the doors. Well, if I'm understanding the room, all I really want to do is is to find out if this shaft will take me to a place that where's the uh, where I'm on the other side of the door. Okay. Um, but you make I... a, a perception roll before you go scouting ahead further on. Wait. I'm oh, sorry. I wanted to tell Abijah something. But Abijah, I have a, a data sphere siphon. It's like a temporary tattoo, and you can talk to the data sphere and get an answer. So if that's useful at all, I'm happy to I'm happy to share it with you. Um, this might be not as big as. Like that might be too too big of a solution for this. Pretty simple. Okay, that makes sense. This is true for anyone though. If you if you need it, let me know. I'm just carrying it around. So Sean, I'm trained, uh, <coughs> and I roll a seven. All right. So even looking at this room, you see a couple other places across the room where you think that looks like a similar ventilation shaft to this one. So presumably, it will connect somehow. It's just a question okay. of getting from there to here. Well, maybe what I should do is just go down into the room of the prisoners and walk through the door. <laughs> See if I can open the door from the other side. You wanna you wanna all just get down into the room? And then we can all okay. just take a corner. Unless we think that there are gonna be guards or alarms or something, I think that that's what we should do. We didn't see the, we didn't see any guards in the prisoner room, right? Nope. All right. Do I we am... look for like machines, alarms, that kind of stuff? Well, there, uh, there some were floating crystals. there were floating crystals, but we know they don't seem to be harmful. Okay. So I think anything else is kinda You know, while we're sitting here talking, I'm gonna take my first recovery roll. Just to suck up. That's okay. a good idea. Alright. Uh you'll so have to ex- you'll have to explain to me how recovery works. I am may have forgotten so um there are four rolls that you can make one takes an action one takes 10 minutes one takes an hour and the last one takes 10 hours mm-hmm. just say hey let's can we stop for x amount of time i want to make a recovery roll At which point you roll 1d6 plus one and you can add those that's how many points you get to add back to your pools in any combination okay that's that's all i need to know uh i guess we're we're all taking a minute i'm gonna take a roll so that's gonna get me one effort speed effort back because so 26 plus one so you actually yeah so that's i got a four total. Oh, okay so that's okay, gonna good. basically get me one speed effort back and and monte as you were looking around in there there are six people on six different of these simple cot like beds so we think there are six prisoners yes. all right um, I don't have, just uh, to state the obvious. Perhaps I don't have any way of getting these guys. You said they were chained, right? I don't have any way of of freeing them from that. But I am going to drop down into the room as quietly as I can, and immediately try to make my way toward one of the doors. 
And if, and if if I see like a prisoner or something, or like if I see that they see me, I'm just gonna go. Okay. Uh, so you drop in, and within seconds, somebody does spot you. Why don't you go ahead and make a uh, persuade roll to convince this person it's in their best interest to, to shut up. You know what, I, uh, I don't, uh, this isn't my strong suit, but I'm gonna use effort. I really want them to not like be, hey, who are you? <laughs> Wait, is it the prisoner that's reacting? Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I, want, I want them to be quiet. Right, right okay. Um, well, I used effort, but I only rolled a six. Okay, so you drop down uh, this prisoner who looks to be a regular sort of person, uh, fairly fairly muscular build, probably works, you know, some sort of hard labor, but they kind of turn their head over, see you, and they start, look like they're gonna say something, but you're like, shh, and it nods, and then it, this person kind of like stretches out their arm to the limit of its chain and kind of like looks pointedly at the chain, <laughs> and then at the other people as well. Okay, and and so I, I give him a hand signal like this, and, and I'm still making my way toward the door. Okay. Uh, can I drop down after him? Yes. All right. Um, I don't know. This is entirely up to the DM, because uh, uh, you'll have to tell me. Do I think that I could... And I don't know if, if weapons or this charging thing that I've added to my weapon has any sort of limited uses, but do I think I could try and break the chains with my heavy weapon? Yeah, you would just need to hit it really hard, and you think that the density nodule in your cipher will last for 24 hours, whether you hit things once or a hundred times. Okay, then I am going to sort of uh, see if, if I can do it safely, I want to take an experimental kind of swing at one of these chains and try and break it. Okay. Or actually, Before I'll, I'll that, wait I'll wait to do that, but until he's sort of scouted. I was going to say that yeah. you do notice that Abijah is kind of creeping right. yeah, by no. <laughs> I, I just want to say I'm getting in that position. I'm kind of checking out the chain, seeing how strong it is, whether I can, like, either just pull it off with might uh, off the wall, or I'd have to physically chop it. Okay. Um, so you're looking at that. Abijah, you're creeping towards the door. What are the other two doing? Um, I'm hanging out where we are uh, for now, kind of just keeping an eye out um, and seeing whether it's, whether it's uh, worth dropping down into this area or not. Um, um, just kind of keeping an eye out. I mean, if I have my need to have my head down below or whatever to be peering through, then. Um... Oh, well, the, 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 fortunately, this room is very, very high. Like it's fifty feet high, and so these little, you know, metal and crystal things that are flying around. Some of them are pretty high up, so you don't need to like hunker down. You're at, I mean, the, the floor of where you are is about six feet above the ground, so you're at twelve feet you know, with your eye level, but you can <laughs> see in there without having to hunker down. Oh right, so I mean, so it is. It would actually be very easy for us to go out, and then actually, pretty much. I mean, if it's six feet high, we can pretty much pretty easily get right back in if we feel like we need to. Yeah, so, boost um, somebody I'm, up or grab a table. Yeah, since since these two uh, have already kind of dropped down, I'm I'm uh, gonna go ahead and drop uh, down as well, in case something happens. I feel like I, I'm at least a little bit more prepared. Um, how how dark or light is this is this place? Um, it's. A lot of these panels and the crystals themselves are giving off light, so it's kind of like a twilight level of light throughout most of the room, but immediately near these panels and such, it's right, almost like, you know, I have a a lantern to, to read by, or a lamp, sorry, an interior lamp. Um, I'd like to find it at least kind of a, a place, um, uh, I'm as I'm trained in both stealth and disguise tasks, I, I essentially want to find a place where I can kind of um, keep my back to something, and to be able to keep an eye out, but also feel like I'm kind of somehow blending in a little bit in case something goes wrong. I at least feel like I'm, I'm starting off with a sense of um, stealth. Um, yeah. Okay. And Shauna? Uh, I'm going to actually, I'm going to connect with the data sphere while everyone's uh, doing their thing. I'm going to use my data sphere siphon, which is a temporary two that I'm going to slap on. And uh, I'm going to tap into the data source knowledge and ask it. Uh, what I really want to know is like, what's the, what can I learn about the safest, fastest way out of here um, that isn't the way that we came in? 
so I want to, I, I don't like to go into situations without knowledge, and I feel like this is, this is the knowledge that I can get that might be useful for us. Okay. Uh, it's processing, and you get an answer back from the data sphere, which is like a low resolution, also scan image of uh, what seems to be a diagram of either this place or a place that looks a lot like this. And oh. there is a path highlighted through it. Excellent. And do I get the sense? That it, I get the sense that it, it, it begins at the door that. Um, that, uh, sorry, uh, Abijah, is, uh, Abijah is attempting to figure out how to open? Yes. Okay. So, Great. Abijah, now that you've hopped down, and first of all, now that everyone is either like actively looking in the room or in the room, all of the prisoners are obviously like focusing all of their attention on you. <laughs> um, but Bear, you are closest to uh, one of these people, and the, the person whispers to you and says, there are people in the crystals. What? And Abijah, you're going to the door. Yes. Uh, I don't know how I, 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 I don't know how to react to that information. So I'm going to keep going with my original plan. Um, is there, is it just like a solid door? Is there like a little window or anything? It's, it's a solid door. Uh, it's not a Numenera powered sort of door. It's just got like a, a physical handle on. I guess I'm assuming it's locked, but I'll see if it's locked. It is locked. Okay. Then I'm going to use my walk through walls ability and pass through it. Okay. Actually, I'm going to take a round you and do my... Uh, uh, my first uh, recovery roll first. Okay. Because I'm actually down on some points. And okay. as you do that... And then I will phase through. I would like you to make a reception roll as you're, uh, as you're spinning an action to catch your breath. Okay. Um, how about a nine? All right, so... Yeah, and getting a sense of everything, and you look around and, oh yeah, one of those gigantic clusters of crystals growing out of the ground. It, it's hard to tell in this level of light, but you realize there is a humanoid figure inside of it, but they're kind of obscured by the, the kind of translucent quality of the crystal itself, but there's a person in that. And does it like, like another prisoner and they're trapped in the crystal or like, a dude watching over everyone else from the crystal or it's hard to say because you're not like right next to it but i mean it's not you don't see this person moving and they're not like hmm i'm watching you it's just kind of like you where there's, there's like a, a upright humanoid figure at the heart of that crystal structure okay you know so right before i phase through the door i will uh, I'll look at uh, Kyrie's and I'll just like point at the crystal and just kind of give a shrug and um, and then I'll go through the door. Okay. You're muted, Beth. Bear. You are right. I am muted. Um, so while he's doing that, I'm going to do the uh, sense magic um, on the uh, on the crystals. Um, it mostly tells me whether it's um, uh, it's uh, whether it's a uh, Numenera device, um, an active or not. Um, I, I'm assuming it's probably going to come back and say yes of some sort, but um, you know, at least kind of maybe gives me a little bit of info. It is not scanned, so it's not the same thing as what. Um, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Malie's ability does, but. It most definitely is a Numenera device, and now that you're like focusing on it, you're seeing what looks like a like a, a warrior type person, uh, you know, muscular, kind of a mean look, some scars, is kind of standing within this crystal, um, and you're noticing that it actually has several smaller crystals that have sprouted from like its shoulders and its neck and the back of its head, similar to the ones that uh, were growing out of your, your mentor Graust. Mm. Maybe those guys stay. Do they, uh, does this, 
person seemed to be aware of us. I mean, I, I realize that my ability probably is not giving me this info, but do I, uh, now that I've, I've been clued into this thing and I've done this, uh, done this sense magic, um, does it, uh, do I get any kind of sense that there's a, a, any attention on us from these, any awareness, any movement, or is it purely, this is like a transformation device and it's just there to turn into something else? Yes. So um, as you're carefully scrutinizing this thing and you're look, trying to see if it can see you, you realize its eyes were closed, but then they snap open and all the crystals on its shoulder, back and head kind of light up with this sickly green energy and it starts to like take a more active posture. Abijah, you have passed through the door. You're muted. Muted. <laughs> Your little floating crystal thing does not pass through the door with you. Does, that makes it, try, sense. does it bump into the door? Uh, it, it stops about an inch away. Oh, okay. Uh, so what, what do I see? Uh, it's a simple lock with like a little twist lock. No, what, what's on the other side of the door? Oh, sorry that you're looking at the door. Um, it is a hallway uh, with, again, it's a lot of metal and synth paneling. Uh, it's been, there's some graffiti. It's been defaced in some places. Uh, and little bits of these crystals kind of mounted in the ceiling. And there's a full level of light here. It's not dim like the rest of the place has been. And the corridor goes off in that direction. If it looks like it would be easy, I'm gonna open up the door. It looks like just a matter of flipping the little lock thing and turning the handle. Um, and then uh, if I have time, um, I'm gonna open the door, make it clear to everyone that the door is open, but then I'm just gonna kinda stay in the doorway with the door sort of half closed so I can look down the hallway, but also keep an eye on what's going on in the room. All right. Still trying to be really stealthy. All right. So you open the door and uh, we'll say at least uh, Malie knows that you went off in that direction. You know what, everyone just, everybody saw you go in that direction. So they're gonna keep an eye on the door. They see the door kind of swing open just a little bit. The little flying crystal thing that was following you slips out through the door and is now near you again. Okay. Now you're kind of keeping an eye on the room and the hallway. Well, uh, just uh, just to, uh, <clears throat> so it's official, the uh, uh, other XP um, for me, I have given to Malie, um, my fellow Nano. Wonder Twin Nanos activate. Right. <laughs> So, uh, Karner and Malie, yes. what are you doing? Uh, I'm gonna drop down quietly into the room and actually go make a beeline uh, for Abeja and and uh, and say like I have, that I, the map's in my head, right? That I got. Yes. And say uh, I talked to the Sphere and I have like a very a, a pretty good map for how to get us out of here quickly. Smart. And Karner, you were looking at the chains. I was with the guy. Um, if I see him uh, while I'm inspecting the chain, can I just also whisper to the um, the prisoner? I say, "Are the people in the crystals bad guys?" <laughs> and he kind of looks panicked and says, "They're going to kill you." <laughs> Good enough. And then he'll he'll probably turn to Kyrie's and be like, then, like seeing him in front of the thing and be like, "Okay, no, we're already there." <laughs> So, a lot of things start to happen at once. Yeah. Um, in front of Kairis, this figure in the crystal kind of like steps out of the crystal, similar to how Abijah just kind of passes through walls. It kind of phases through this crystal out. And it's this naked person, and they've got all these crazy crystals, and they're all glowing. And like their eyes kind of have this crazy sort of glow from the crystals as well. And Within a few seconds, the other two big crystal formations, you can sense motion within those and people are starting to go and push their way out of those crystals as well. So do I get a chance to react before, um, uh, essentially before initiative on this guy coming out? I saw his eyes open. I saw yeah. him starting to come through. Do I get a... Um, I'll let you take an action before we go to initiative. All right, well, I have the ability surprise attack. So if, if attacking from a hidden vantage, which I don't have, with surprise, which I don't have, 
or before, before an opponent has acted, which would be here, um, my uh, difficulty is reduced by one step. Um, and if I do succeed, uh, I inflict two additional points of damage. So okay. that, is my, that is my step, and I am onslaughting the fucker. <laughs> All right. Are you doing a mm-hmm. mental blast or a physical blast? I'm doing physical. Okay. Remember, you get an extra damage from the narcotic gas, too. That's right. That's right. I hope that thing's is sticking still. Yeah, you got some focus, and you're like, oh, look, there's, you know, a pulse at his neck that I'm seeing right there. Good place to aim. All right. Um, so I am uh, applying effort uh, as well to, uh, to hit. And I roll a nine. So that's uh, effort plus the this additional. Uh, you uh, hit it. Okay. So that's four points plus the two additional points plus whatever that necrotic was giving me. All righty. Uh, that narcotic is giving you plus one damage. All right, so you blast it. The weird thing is that his flesh seems to be like augmented with some sort of subdermal crystalline structure. So it definitely hits and impacts it, but not as hard as it would, as you would assume it would affect a completely naked person. Yeah, I figured. And now I'd like everybody to roll initiative, please. Right, initiative time. 14. 12. Uh, I am trained and I got a seven. (laughs) Don't forget you do have that XP. Me? No. No, uh, no, Oh, did you get a one? (laughs) <laughs> he did, but it's just you know what? I'd rather take a one on initiative than yeah. Any, well, oh, that doesn't that doesn't get that, a that doesn't get a. It does. It just you know maybe it's not <laughs> as bad as in combat or something. So. Gotcha. I'm gonna see I don't think it speak. works that way. I think they're all. <laughs> <laughs> Sean's gullible sometimes. Right, I'm very gullible. <laughs> I know something. You can tell me that's not even my name, and I believe you. I know. <laughs> All right. They go first. All um, of them? Oh, oh. So fortunately, two of them, their action is to step fully out of this crystal and kind of like get a sense of where they are and, and that they have, you know, four opponents now. Uh, the third one, or actually the first one, which was attacked by Kyris, is uh, going to lash out at him and he he kind of takes a swing at you with his hand, but he doesn't actually physically touch you. Like these little jagged crystals just kind of like immediately fly out of his hand. Like he's almost like a, like a porcupine flinging its tail. And these just things are flinging out at you. So I need you to make a speed defense roll against this ranged attack. Great. Um, so that first, uh, very first thing when we stepped in, the uh, cipher that I had activated, um, that's giving me essentially speed defense, I, I'm i guessing is how that works. Um, oh, which, which cipher was that? So it was oh, a- Oh, the teleportation one, yeah, or the time dilation one, yes. Time, time dilation, right. So it sounds like it, it gives me two steps for defense, so I'm going just to kind of rely on that right now and hope that that helps. I roll a six, it does not sound like it's gonna help. All right. So these needles hit you and they, with uncanny accuracy, hit you in various nerve clusters and you are stunned. (gasps) That's not nice. And you take five points of damage. Uh, I have one armor from uh, Ward. Does that count here? Yes. Okay. All right. Then it is time for the heroes to go. Or heroes. <laughs> yeah, I'm, tr- I'm working on it. <laughs> so, is there a guy? Is there one of these guardians? Uh, are they all like? What are the distances involved here? Uh, 
The one that's across the room is beyond a short distance away, but the two that are in the other crystal clusters are, you could get there within less than a short distance. Okay. Um, so I have a dart thrower and I am going to load up a dart and shoot it at one of them. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna use effort, but for damage. Uh, it's a light weapon, so it's already gonna reduce the difficulty by one step. And then I'm gonna hope I roll well. Unless someone wants to donate to charity and <laughs> really fast. <laughs> I said, hey, guys, if you wanna help us out, now would be a great time. Or you can <laughs> screw us over. Why not? That's fun too. Or screw us over. Right. Um, what is that? Okay, so a 14. Oh, oh. You have a and step, reduced, right? and The difficulty is reduced by one because it's a light weapon. All right, so you hit it with your dark thrower. Sh- should I should Ooh. I do this on Monty's turn or should I wait? <laughs> uh, Chris Piazza donated seventy five dollars. He said, "Make it a good intrusion, Sean." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm I'm so torn. I want to be like, "Thank you, Chris," but also like, "No, thank you, Chris." <laughs> I'm not gonna say thank you to that. <laughs> So, uh, how much damage does that do? Well, with the level of effort, um, and I'm using Pierce, so it'll be a total of six points of damage. All right. As uh, Kyrie's noted, these things do have some sort of crystalline armor under their skin, so it does absorb some of that, but some of it does get through. And when you attack that thing, the little floating crystal thing around you, flashes like four times in in very short order and then changes from green to like a ugly yellow sort of color. And so do all of the little flying crystals in the room, even the ones that you all brought with you. And they're all suddenly flashing these bursts of this color. But I named you. Is Is that the intrusion? As far as you can tell. Okay. I'm just wondering if the there's more. Okay. I'm sure, I'm sure that will end up being a terrible, terrible thing. Uh, I, I think just to balance the scales, uh, Beauty Mark Studio donated $15. He wants to give a nat 20 to Monty. Oh, thank you. I'm sure I'll need it. No, it's a bore. <laughs> right. That was Monty's turn. What about the rest of you? Oh, Bear, you are paralyzed. You're stunned. I am stunned. Can't do anything this turn. Uh, activate you. Uh, do you want to go, Melly? Or go for it. Okay. Uh, he already has. Uh, Karner already has his his glaive out, so he's just gonna sort of like wheel across the room and just in a wide arc, bring this heavy weapon around like right to the side of this thing, and try and attack it. Uh, the closest one is one that's fighting uh, Kyrie. So yeah, that the one that just the, the one that just oh. shot him. How many right. are there? There's three. There are three. Got it. So uh, what uh, attack roll is just a might check? That's either might or speed, your choice. Uh, is that heavy weapons? So I'm assuming this is going to be straight might. It really is just a question of what pool do you want to spend points from if you supply effort. Okay. Uh, these things look beefy, right? Yes. I'm going to I'm gonna throw a might effort into this, and I'm going to do it. Um, now, here, I have, a, I have a document that tells me how to attack here. Um... So what you'll do is you'll make your d20 roll. Yeah. And um, you can, if you apply effort to hit, then that reduces the difficulty of hitting by one step. Or you can okay. apply effort to damage, in which case you'll add three damage if you hit. Okay. Uh, and what about my moves and focus abilities? So I have I have thrust and pierce. Ah, uh, yes. So those, uh, because you are a glaive and you are a tier one glaive, those basically cost you zero points. So you can just automatically add an extra point of damage to your attack. Okay. Um... okay. I, I would suggest you probably apply effort to hit. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna use a, I was going to use a might effort uh, to hit. Can I also use my flourish? Uh, that's the thing that adds... Uh... It gives everyone a plus one. Yes, if you can, everybody will get plus one. All right, so you are going to see, uh, this is, well, well, we'll roll it first, and we'll see if this works. Oh, you know what? I'm going to use my nat 20. There you go. Because I have one, and I haven't used it yet. All right, so first of all, the natural 20 means that you didn't have to spend any points, or you get the points back for uh, spending them on applying okay. effort. That costs you nothing. 
Second of all, you get a major effect from your natural 20. Now, one of the major effects is just four damage. Yeah. Or you could do something fancy like, oh, I want to knock it down or I want to disarm it, but it doesn't seem to have any weapons. Yeah. But um, that sort of thing. So what major effect would you like against this creature? I don't think knocking this thing down is going to do much. So I'm just, uh, I'm using my, I'm basically he's using his, the power of this thing that he screwed into his blade uh, and the extra, extra power to just straight up cleave through this thing. So okay. I'm going to take the damage. I'm going to take the four damage. All right. So, so now, you... so my base weapon is six modified by two because of the met, the cipher that I attached to it. And then plus four. Nice. And, and then you used uh, thrust or pierce, right? Uh, yeah, sure. It's a good thrust. Right, so that's another plus one. So six, that's four, 11. eleven. That's thirteen total, right? No, no, no. It's six, then mm -hmm. eight for the cipher, uh, yes. four for the crit, and then one. Oh, you're right. I forgot. So yeah, it's thirteen. My bad. Okay. So okay. with this crazy dramatic whoosh, whoosh, swing with this thing hits it super hard. Uh, its armor eats up a little of that, but a whole bunch of it gets through, and it kind of reels momentarily. Um, the weird thing is, is like there's this splurt of blood that comes out, but it's also very strongly colored by little mm -hmm. sparkly sand green bits as well. Uh, so yeah, that was a powerful, powerful hit. And yeah. everybody else, you get plus one on your next uh, You are damage. inspired by uh, Karner's fervor in battle as he kind of shouts uh <laughs> guys let's i don't want to turn into a crystal thing <laughs> and Meili. um so when the people come out of the crystals do the crystals crystal things remain like whole like, like they're not breaking them the things or... they phase through correct yeah yes. and uh, so, do, I may not know the answer to this. Do I get a sense that they're, they're they, these are like portals, or that they're just, they live in these crystals that just are able to come out? I mean, your friend yeah. Elijah can pass through physical matter, so it seems to be perhaps either something that these creatures, these people have, or perhaps something that is part of the nature of the crystal and that you can phase through it. You know, I'm gonna, because since I'm not much of a fighter, I'm gonna let these guys do what they're doing. And uh, I'm gonna see if I can, like, can I stick my hand in this crystal? Uh, why don't you go ahead and make an intellect roll and I'll give you uh, one step for talking to machines and one step for knowledge of the Numenera. Fantastic. Uh, I'll apply a level of effort also. And I roll a 20. Okay, wow, nice. Yay! Hopefully my hand doesn't get eaten off with the 20, so it suck. No, you uh, <laughs> reach through and you're like, wait, and you're just kind of like thinking about getting your brain in the right sort of frequency to do this, and you just push right on in. And, and do I, ah, uh, crap, if I had known I was gonna do it so well, I would have stuck my face in. Um, <laughs> do I feel, um, and there's, so there's no resistance, can I still see my hand or is it gone somewhere else? So there is slight resistance, it feels kind of like pushing your hand into jello. Mm, good. Um, it's cold and you feel kind of a prickly sensation on your skin. Uh, the crystal okay. is translucent, so you can still see your hand. So it's not going somewhere else. Right. Interesting. Okay, I'm assuming that's You feel like you could just push yourself all the way in if you wanted to. Yeah, I'm gonna communicate that above the fray if, if I think people can hear me. All right, that's everybody. Thanks. All right. so. All of the little floating uh, crystalline things come together in the center of the room. Oh, good. <laughs> Wait, the ones that are following us? Yes, and all the ones that were already in this room. <laughs> Can I, like, catch mine? I'm like, nope. No, no, no. If, if you want to grab at it, you no, can I'm make just, it. He's going to, like, die for it, but it's already gone. All right. So these things <laughs> come together. They kind of like line themselves up in a ring with all their metallic parts kind of forming this ring and all the crystal parts sticking outward. And they start to glow really, 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 really brightly, just kind of increasingly bright. And meanwhile, these uh, crystallized soldiers are going to attack. Um, 
Bear, you are still uh, stunned, so that one's going to ignore you for now, and it's going to uh, focus on Karner. Karner, I need you to make a speed defense roll. Sure. Let me open my dice. I don't know why I keep closing these. Um... Oh, shit. I missed. 18. 18. All right, that succeeds. This thing kind of lashes out with its hand. This little burst of these needle-like crystals come flying out for you. Duck quickly out of the way. Um, Abijah, the other, one of the other ones, moves up to you and uh, does a similar sort of thing. It's only going about half the distance because it seems it's, it's making a range attack, even though it's kind of swinging like it's making a melee attack. So I need you to make a speed defense roll. So there's crystals flying at me. Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm trained in speed defense. Uh, I'm gonna use a level of effort. And I roll a, can't tell. I'm 18. Sorry, 18. can't tell if it's like 13 or an 18. Okay. Uh, yeah, you dodge out of the way these little needle-like crystals, which some of them just impact on the ground and shatter and, and kind of fall apart into this glassy dust that you saw your, your friend Grost turn into. Uh, the third one is going to kind of stride halfway across the room toward Karner and attack him as well. So that's another speed defense roll for the Karner. Net 20. All right. Uh, you get a special effect for that. What would you like? Uh... Can I, like, duck and roll under this dude's between his legs? Like, what kind of, what, what are we talking special? Uh, I mean, it's it's a little, you might say, oh, I want to be in an advantageous position, so on my next turn, I get a one-step advantage to attack. Or, yeah, can, he, can I, like, duck and roll behind him so I'm in, like, a good place to, to backstab sure. him with my, my thing? Sweet. Cool. Dark Souls, this thing. Okay. And then... Um, all the flashing from the ring of the little flying crystal things ends, and there is someone new in the room who wasn't there before. He is this, like, guy who's tall, like six foot five, but his body is really weirdly proportioned. Like, he's got these big, thick, heavy legs and these spindly arms, and he's got, like, a, a brand on his face of the Order of Truth. And he's got a bunch of these crystals growing out of himself. And there's like one big crystal kind of like jammed into the center of his forehead. And he's like, who is disturbing my research? I will kill you all. And the prisoner was like, get us out of here. Get us out. <laughs> They're like having their chains around their chains. <laughs> and you're pretty sure this is Delphos, the doctor of crystals and pain. And Bear, you're no longer stuck. Yay. Um, so, uh, so this guy just appears, uh, where is he in relationship to others, like the other, um, uh, uh the other crystal guys who have come out, um, uh, how, how far away are they from each other, and... At best, um, this Delphos and, uh, one of these other crystal and soldiers are an immediate distance away from each other. You could get two if you have, like, a detonation, for example. I do have a detonation, for example. <laughs> um, so I have a level six gravity detonation, and um, uh, it's on my wrist, and so I'm gonna pop it off and shoot it at them, and I'm applying effort uh, to get it as near Wait, where, you, where are you shooting this? <laughs> uh, to the guy who just appeared. Oh, okay, uh, no, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Get yeah. out of the room. All right, to, to Delthos, and it sounds like another one of these crystal guys. Sweet. And so just to be sure, I rolled a natural 20 as well. <laughs> <laughs> get stuff. You need to roll worse so we get people donating to charity so you can roll better. <laughs> I have made yeah, good job, Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, kids. <laughs> oh. um, hey, they, oh, can, they, can still, they can still screw our day up, all right? It's true. Right. Come on, on the GM Please side. Please don't. Um, so this, so this one bursts in, in an immediate radius, inflicting damage equal to the cipher level at uh, level six. Um, uh, so everything that's within there gets crushed to the ground for one second and cannot take physical actions. Um, so I guess it would be six points of damage. Um, if with this twenty, can I do the additional damage to each of them? Uh, yes. 
Did, would that apply to each of them, Monty, or would that be kind of the area damaging where it'd be half? That'd uh, be to each of them. All right, so that's 10 damage. <laughs> Go murder! Oh, right. <laughs> I, is it, is it like, like in the middle of his speech, he's just like poof, pulled down yeah. to the floor? Squish. <laughs> okay. Nice work. Yeah. No, that was that was clutch. So he's all like, ah, and then just, it's kind of uh, embarrassing how quickly he gets squished up. Despite having big, like, elephantine, meaty legs, he's just knocked completely prone by this thing, as is this other crystallized soldier. And uh, so are a couple of these little uh, crystalline robot things that just kind of get held down to the ground. Uh, they stop their angry flashing once Delphos appeared, by the way. Harris, if you kill him, do you get to take his title? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> there must always be a doctor. <laughs> uh, so the other three of you can go. All right. Uh, you guys can go. I'm pretty much set up to smash this dude that uh, attacked me last turn, so. Um, you know, I, the only thing that I could probably do that would be helpful would be distract. Oh, uh, uh, you know what? Uh, the, we have not really, we have not gotten the, any of the prisoners free yet, correct? Correct. No, not yet. Um, uh, you know, the, probably the best thing I can do is distract. Uh, these guys that you guys are going to try to attack and and help you guys because I'm not much in the way of fighting. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna drop to the ground and like start talking to the guy like you know and you know how good I am at talking to people. So he's, I'm sure he's just gonna be like what? <laughs> um, I, to I think I sound all cool. And, and well, was isn't Delphus is all, already pinned to the ground, right? He doesn't have. Right, that's why I'm dropping to the ground. Well, he already can't take an action for one turn. Oh, so he can't even defend. Well, he won't be able to attack, so there's no point in trying to hinder him on his next turn. Right. But there are two others that aren't that aren't so limited, and so you could try and distract them. Okay, uh, but you guys aren't attacking them, right? Oh yeah. Like, I'm trying to I'm trying to distract him from being able to uh, prevent an attack. Distract who? The guy, the dude. Well, distraction, distra so there's distraction, which is you're giving them a one-step penalty on their attacks. Or there's the, I'm trying to draw somebody's attack to me so they don't try to attack somebody else, which is an entirely different thing. Right. I was just trying to distract him so he didn't notice that these guys were going to attack him. Is that not a thing? I mean, it seems narratively like it's a thing. Uh, they're, well, I mean, he's aware that they are all in the room, but he's held down by this gravity detonation for so a little bit. Matter. He's not going to be able to attack right away anyway. Okay, well, I'm going to distract the other guys then, that, so that they maybe won't attack on their turn. They're, going, they're already in melee with your friends. So if you want to help your friends or interfere with your enemies, you can do either of those things as your action without even having to make a roll. Then I will help my friends. Okay. I, I, I don't think I have a good sense of the choreography of the room. I'm sorry, you guys. I, so I sort of missed it somehow. Who would you like to assist? Uh, I would like to assist uh, Carner because he's kicking some ass. Okay. Um, and you want to uh, give him an asset to his attack rolls? Sure. Cool. All right. So uh, Millie is is helping you. So Carner, it is your turn. Uh, you I'm turn. I'm already. Am I behind the one that I just smashed last turn? Yes. Okay. I'm already behind him. Uh, I've rolled between his legs. She's kind of um, distracting him up front, so Connor's just gonna take his heavy glaive and just bring it down right on this thing's head from behind. All right, so you get two steps in favor on your roll to attack. Sweet. Um, probably don't need to use an effort then. I will, oh, ah! Yeah, and are you attacking the one that you hit really hard before, or the yeah. one that? Yeah, you, the, oh. one that, the one I already damaged. Hold on, I dropped my die. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, yeah, let's let's go ahead and do that. I rolled a ten. Okay. Uh, but you have two steps in your favor. Yeah. So that hits. Sweet. Uh, so that's gonna be eight damage. Eight damage. All right. And even through its armor that chops through it, you chop off this. Oh, actually, you have the option of not killing him if you want to just. Disable them. Uh, is this this is a horrifying crystal man, right? Uh, he's got crystals growing out of his body in not human ways. 
kill him. He, I, he's fine. He he don't need. He does. I'll put him out of his misery. All right. So you just. I don't want to your... try and pry the crystals out of him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just right down on his head. You realize that these crystals that are embedded in his body, like, are a good several inches deep, because you can just see like chunks of them sticking out. Yeah. But kill him. Drops dead. Yeah. Awesome. And Abijah. So. As I'm loading my dart throw again and, and picking my next target, I, I just want to take a half a second to just kind of do a status on 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 who's where and, and what. Because I know some people are affected by the detonation. Now there's a dead guard. Okay. So in the center of the room is Delphos and one of these crystal soldiers. Across the room and they're, and they're is- flat. They're on the ground. They're flat. Yes, they're they're flat in this turn. Across the room is now a dead crystal soldier and a living crystal soldier, and they that one is in melee range of Kyrie's and Carter. Okay, and which one did I shoot last round? Um, the one that is uh, flattened near the middle of the room. Okay. okay. Remember, you guys also have plus one uh, because of my flourish from before. That's right. Cool. cool. Uh, I will use that plus one, and I will, I guess I'll shoot the other guard that is still up and moving around. Oh, wow. Because they're the, he's, he's the only, he's currently the only threat in the room, right? Right. Well, not counting all the little flying things, which may or may not be a threat. Yeah, he's, uh, that, that one's bearing down on Kyrie's. Who is not, has Kyrie's done anything yet? Yeah, I did the cipher. I oh, right, up. right, my bad. Totally forgot about that. So I'm using the XP that I earned from the GM intrusion earlier to re-roll. All right. I don't really want that one. Oh. And all right, so instead, that's uh, with the plus one from Karner, that's a 14. Right. Uh, and I, it's, uh, the difficulty is reduced by one step because of my dirt thrower. Right. That hits. Just okay. Break. Okay. Then that will be. Uh, I should have used effort. And then there's only three points of damage, even with Pierce. All right. So it goes stink and just kind of sticks into its crystalline flesh and doesn't seem to actually hurt it. Wow. Okay. All right. Now we know how much armor they have. <laughs> At least. Yeah. And it's their turn, and the crystallized soldier, soldier in the middle of the room and Delthos stand up. Um, the one soldier is going to take a swing at Karner, who is the, the murdering maniac, which is different than Kyrie's, who's literally the person who's murdering things. Um, and you know what? The other soldier is going to attack Kyrie's. Delthos is going to fiddle with a Numenera device that he has. I thought they lost their action. Was that this round? It took a long time to go through this round. All right, right. so never mind. Sorry. Now I'm sad. (laughs) All right, so just the one attack that's attacking Carter. Hey, I'll take it. Give it to me. Oh, I have to make a roll. You have to make a speed defense roll. Speed defense. Uh, Can I apply some effort here? Yes, you can. Sure, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. Uh, 19 plus effort. Okay, nice. yeah, you dodge out of the way at this thing again. Again, it swings its hand. These little needles fly, and they miss you. And that's it for their turn. So, uh, the the usual suspects. Um. So I guess uh, uh I would have a shot. Uh, the guy who uh, who had originally attacked me was still up. Um. Um, so I would like to do, uh, gosh, I never prepped that. Um, so I'm going to do onslaught, but I'm going to do mental damage this time. Okay. Um, and, uh, I will apply effort to hit. Um, these are pretty, pretty tough guys. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, effort to hit. Okay. I roll a 12. Uh, because you applied effort, you hit. Nice. So there's two points of damage. And that bypasses armor. Yes. Very nice. Yeah, you feel some sort of weird contact with the crystals in his brain, but they seem to be fragile brain crystals, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the rest of you. 
Sean, are you going to assist again like you did last time? No, well, sort of, but in a different way. How far away am I from the nearest fighty creature? Of some uh, kind, it doesn't matter what. One of them's in melee with me, so probably not, not very Pretty far. Pretty close, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah I'm, gonna, distance. I'm gonna throw my blanket that hums pleasantly while covering <laughs> a living creature over his head and, uh, and help that way. <laughs> All right. Uh, why don't you make an attack roll for that? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll play a level of effort. I'm assuming speed? Sure. Uh, 15. 15. All right. Yeah, you... I mean, at this... It's not really meant for that. So you're mostly kind of like throwing it in its face. But momentarily, yes. It was like it covers the thing's <laughs> face and it has to like pull itself down. I, I, will, I figure uh, it takes the dog one round to get the blanket off her head. It has to take a humanoid <laughs> creature at least one round. <laughs> What it'll do is I will uh, say that its attacks are hindered on its next turn. Actually, you know what? It's and defenses because it's pulling a blanket off its face. <laughs> Does the blanket like getting shredded by the crystals? And like, no, the blanket's kind of like la da dee. Like a nice little lullaby. It's happy. <laughs> and so we have Avija and Karner left. You know, I'll take advantage of the guy with the blanket on his head. <laughs> Um, and I'll use a level of effort for damage. So I, it sounds like I, it, if my dart thrower and that thing, it'll be uh, two levels reduced. Sounds right. Uh, I only roll a seven, though. That's probably not going to do it. Not quite. It's a little chaotic right now. Um, fortunately, you didn't the blanket. So the blanket's not. <laughs> Carter. Uh, I have kind of ducked and rolled under this thing that has a blanket on its face now. Uh, and so if I can cross the distance to the middle of the room, I would like to bring my heavy blade down on the head of Mr. Doctor of Crystal Pain. All right, go ahead and uh, make your attack roll. So I'm, a, I'm going to expend a might effort here to, to give a big overhand chop. And are you uh, playing this effort to hit or to damage? To hit. hit, I trust. I trust in my damage. I'm gonna use my exper my experience point to reroll that because <laughs> I rolled a two. All right, here we go, guys. Don't fail me. That was not better. That was mm. a, that was a five. Okay. <laughs> uh, you bring your glaive down, and uh, well, I mean he's. He's still pressed to the ground by that detonation. So, steps. that's still not enough. He is able yeah. to like, throw up the side and, and just not, not a very good hit. You're a little off put by attacking a person who's just lying prone on the ground. Like <laughs> um, yeah, that's damn. Uh, yeah, no, I have nothing else. Okay. I'm, I'm just like, ah, no, there's crystal floaty things are in the way and I'm trying to Get over them. All right. Now they get to go. And uh, Delta <laughs> and this other soldier uh, stand up from the, the ebbing effect of the gravity. Uh, the first soldier that was right there is going to attack Karner. The other is going to attack Kyris. And Delthos is now going to fiddle with his Numenera device and point it at uh, one of the flying crystal things near Karner. So, Karner, I need you to make two speed defense rolls. Kyrie's, I need you to make one. Sweet. Here is number one. Uh, the first one's going to be a 12. Okay. Uh, the second one's going to be a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. I got a three. All right. So that first one is the crystalline soldier hitting you with these uh, crystalline dart things for six points of damage, and you are stunned. Mm. The <laughs> other one is kind of weird. It's a little floating crystal machine thing, and it opens up, and one of its crystals like flies out and embeds itself in like the base of your neck at the spine. And you feel it starting to connect to your nervous system. Rip. And Kyrie's defense roll, please. Yes. Um, so again, I have the uh, <coughs> that uh, 
uh, sniper uh, action going on, but I am also going to apply uh, effort for this. And I roll an 18. All right, you dodge out of the way of these little needle sort of things. All right. And it is back to the PCs. Help. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Uh, so Carter is stunned. Yeah, I can't do anything. So I imagine there's a, there's, so there's a warrior dude who's about ready to attack Karner, who is stunned. Yes. So I will take uh, my dart thrower and I will shoot him. And I'm using a level of effort for damage. That's a 16. 16, that hits. Okay. So that will be uh, six points of damage. All right, that gets through its armor. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna use distant activation on the device that the doctor's holding. Turn that sucker off. Oh, nice. Okay, make a roll, please. Um, so I have machines and Numenera, and I'm gonna apply a level of effort. 13. Okay, yeah, you reach out with your your mechanical mental powers and go, how does this thing work? I'm like, oh, little magnetic power disconnect and all the lights on that device just go off. And he kind of like looks up from it and just looks oh, at Oh no! <laughs> I looked <laughs> over at someone else. <laughs> and does this horrible, horrible grimace and you realize that all of his teeth are also replaced with these weird crystals. <laughs> I don't know if I'm less or more scared of him after seeing that. <laughs> Um, just uh, real, real quick, uh, Grant has come in with twenty dollars. He says, "Good luck, Monty and Shauna. You guys are gonna get an XP each." And then he says, "P.S. Oh, Darcy you. rules." Nice. <laughs> she does rule. She she, does. I, th I think she bribed him to say that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to attack the one that was still close to me. That I think the number of us have hit, but he is still up. Yes. Uh, I'm doing Onslaught, Mental Attack. Um, uh, I will apply a level of effort for damage. And um, that is it. And I roll a 17. Nice. That hits. And that's plus one damage, too. Uh, that would be two, uh, six points of damage. Six points. All right. And that actually kills him. All right. Shatter these crystals in his brain. He kind of like his eyes roll back in his head and he just falls over dead. And I laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, oh, I killed another one. <laughs> that's what you do. <laughs> so that's that. And that's it for the PC. So we're now we're back up to the top. Uh, Carter, this thing is growing something into your spine and you're feeling yep. like another presence trying to control your body. Mm. It's not like doing anything yet, but you can, it, it's almost like there's another consciousness trying to embed itself in your nervous system. Sweet. This, Love it. Uh, the crystalline soldier is going to, actually, yeah, uh, Delthos says, ignore him, he's mine. <laughs> that one and points over at Malie. Ah! I run, no, I'm, ah. So, uh, <laughs> it strides over in your direction and then swings out with its hand and these little crystals fly out. Please make a speed defense roll. Hold my book bag up. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, let's see, I have, uh, I will apply a level of effort and I will roll a four. Oh, I have an XP. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, donors. 18! 18. Okay, you dodge out of way these little crystals. Well done. Woo! The books and the protected books, me. The book, books dodge too? The books are fun. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Gotta make sure. And then Elthos uh, takes something out of a bag and kind of like tosses it into the air and it kind of starts spinning and flies at Melee. So please make another speed defense roll. Oh, I'm sure I make that sound. <laughs> 12. 12, okay. 
Uh, this thing hits you. Uh, these sharp, weird kind of crystals spin and just start to bore into like, like here on your shoulder, and you take five points of damage. Oh, 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 oh! oh I'm... And they're still spinning as this is happening. I'm. I now have zero might. <laughs> All right, so you're impaired. Yes. You're kind of a scrawny nano, aren't you? <laughs> hey, now. Look, she's in the library a lot, all right? That's it's... right. When you think with all those books, she'd be working out. You know? <laughs> You'd think with all these murderers and thieves around me, I'd have a little help. All right, and it's PC's turn. Am um, I, am I, I'm good now, right? Or do I have to save against anything? You are no longer stunned, but yes, this presence is growing in your way. It's not affecting anything you're doing yet. You can still take your own actions, but okay. it's like there's an enemy voice encouraging you to do other things. Okay. So we we all have seen that he has something that has attacked him and stuck into him and all that. Yes. Um, it's like a four inch long kind of greenish crystal sticking out of the base of his neck. Um, I would like to try to um, uh, help them, help him if I can. Uh, using my knowledge of uh, Numenera and all of that to see if there's something that I could uh, quickly assess and perhaps extract um, and maybe just yank out either way. Um, but uh, I, I would like to help him if I can. Well, do you want to spend an action like analyzing the situation or you just want to grab the thing and yank it out? Mm -hmm. I think I was going to grab the sucker and yank it out. <laughs> All right, uh, Carter Kyrese is just reaching for your neck, looking. I'm not very... looking. I'm not paying attention to him. I'm, he can, he can go for it. All right, so Kyrese, go ahead and make a. Uh, should be a might roll to grab and pull on this thing. All right, a four. four. Um, <laughs> that's not gonna do much, right? Uh, well, you can match. Okay, yeah. Then I will do it. Eight. 16. 16, all right, so you grab onto this thing, and again, like all these other crystals, it feels cold to your touch. You're like, you know, Carter, when he grabs that thing, it feels kind of like a combination of, like, one is, like, when you hit your funny bone really, really hard, so there's this weird kind of numbing sensation, mm -hmm. and at the same time, it also feels kind of like a shock of electricity going through you, but he just goes, and rips this thing out and there's like a, a spurt of blood and there's all these really fine tendrils that are kind of like crystalline tendrils that were attached to it that just come ripping out of your flesh as well. <laughs> you take five might damage. Oh! That oh. your armor does not stop. <laughs> okay. But that weird kind of growing alien presence in your nervous system and mind stops. Okay. I pat him on the back and say you're welcome. <laughs> Uh, as can I channel that pain into it, like as I scream and swing my my glaive uh, at this guy's head? Certainly. All right. Uh, I'm gonna use another might effort to hit because uh, who cares if I drain my might pool right now? Why? Why not? We're we're going there anyway. <laughs> um. So. Nice. Yay. The nat 20. 20, all right. Well, uh, you get those <laughs> points back for spending effort. And you can get a special effect, or you can take the plus four damage with your special effect. Uh, I want to, I want to, I, I don't so know just, if the, Just, you know, you think if you took the damage, you'd probably kill him. Yeah, I, I figure Karner's not thinking right now. He's just like, ah, and just swings this thing as hard as he can at this guy's head. And, all right. What's I'll, your yeah, I'll take I'll take the damage. I'll just go straight up rage. And what's your damage? Six for the the blade, two for the a cipher, and then four for the crit. All right. Its armor blocks some of that, but the rest of it is absorbed by its uh, soft gray matter. <laughs> 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 Smacking the side of the head, this guy falls over dead. And Delthos is like, no, I was gonna keep those. Oh, is that not Delthos? I thought I was attacking Delthos. Oh, no, you, I thought you were attacking the uh, the crystal soldier that was right there. No, I was assuming I was attacking Delthos because he so was- Sorry, he's further, he's further into the room. Okay, then yeah. I'll take the soldier, that's fine. Okay, so yeah. you take out the soldier. 
Crackaboo. All good. So is uh, all the warriors dead then? Except yes, yeah, that should be the last one. Can from where I am by the door, can I reach Delphos and still take an action? Um, if you move an immediate distance, he'll still be out of your physical reach. You can use a range attack on him, or unless you want to run, I could. You can make a, a run roll to close that distance and still be able to take an action. Uh, that's all right. Um, I will just load my dart thrower again and shoot at Delphos, and I'm going to use that last nat 20. And uh, I'm going to add a level of effort for damage, which cost me nothing because I got a nat 20. Right. <laughs> I like the way that works. Um, we should do this more often. <laughs> so uh, if I just add that to damage, that will be a total of... 10 points of damage to Delphos. Wow, all right. So he has some armor like these soldiers do, but that is a nice, nice hit. And he's looking pretty hurt. He's like, ah! Oh. Mm-hmm. He's weird crystal in teeth. He says, once she is dead, I'm killing you. All right, well, I think I, I think I don't have a whole lot left in me beyond this, guys. No Lee. All right, so uh, is this so the thing that hit me like is it it's not like continuing to do damage or anything, right? Uh, it seems like it's still going to do damage on it on Delthos's next turn. Well, then I'm gonna just deactivate it. Or okay. To, right, it's a machine. I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna try to re- deactivate it. I'll uh, I'll apply effort since well uh, will I well I have training in machines and Numenera, so I I won't apply effort. I'll just use those. For the best, and I will roll a. Sorry, I'm getting old and it's dark in here. Uh, what is that? <laughs> Fourteen. <laughs> Fourteen. Fourteen. All right. So with your uh, effort and uh, training, or sorry, with your training and training, uh, you succeed, and the thing just stops spinning. And if you like, I'll let you just yank out the inner piece of new Heck mirror. yeah! I'm gonna pocket it, but I'll yank it out. <laughs> All right, and that's everybody. So yep. now Delphos is going to go, and he is still hoping to take out Meli. So he is going to step up and do a similar sort of gesture that the soldiers did. They're going to swipe at you and fire these crystals. Um. So I am. Um. In, I am impaired. Uh, so a level of effort cost me one extra. Um, but if oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna apply a level of effort, I, I can't really get hurt again. I don't think. Um, I'm gonna roll a. Uh, I'm gonna roll a nine. Okay, uh, he hits you. I'm gonna use my XP <gasps> and have her reroll that. Thank you. All right, now I'm gonna roll a. An eight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I started out so well tonight. Uh, he hits you for with these crystal things for six points of damage. <gasps> you are stunned. Bastard. Obviously, you're out of might, so that rolls over to speed damage. And then, uh, here, Shauna. Yes. No. Aww. I haven't even I haven't even detracted my speed damage yet. All right, what happens? <laughs> uh, go ahead, gonna... go ahead, because I have something I want to add to this. Okay, he waves his hand a weird sort of gesture, and like all the little flying crystal robots in the room start to kind of gather up behind him and just kind of touch themselves to his back. Uh, if I wasn't stunned, I would say, "Stop waving your hands." <laughs> Uh, we have we have a forty dollar anonymous donation that just says weird. <laughs> All right. So if he's going, I think that's a perfect time to get some weird stuff. That's good. All right. Uh, so Askren, why don't you decide who gets to make the weird roll? Uh, I think Melly should definitely get one. And uh, was Monty hasn't had a weird weird roll. Why not? Uh, so so it's two of them. Okay. Yeah. Go to 39. Okay. 
I roll 31. <laughs> All right. Oh. These weird so, are weird. These little flying crystal and robot things start to fuse with Delphos' flesh and he starts to change form. Um, they kind of like throw these weird crystalline tendrils out of his back and down his, his legs and stuff and reinforce his, his big, big meaty human legs. And now he's kind of got this weird kind of spidery, spider human centaur sort of thing with these extra legs that have like now are raising him up on the tippy toes of that. And his flesh is now completely crystallized. Weird, and I don't like him. Okay. <laughs> and I'm stunned for a one round, right? Just sort of yes. Okay. And that was his turn. So now we're back to the PC. All right. Uh, so he just turned into a giant spider centaur. A, a drider, a crystal drider. Sure. <laughs> uh, I, I want to hit him. Oh, you know what? I have no idea if this is gonna work, but it. I don't think it's gonna. It's gonna. No, it's not gonna do anything. I just want to use my cipher, but it's so useless. What is it? <laughs> it's. It's just a sonic detonation. I mean, it does damage. Yeah, a little bit, I think. But it's mostly deafening. Oh. Uh, <sighs> is that what you want to do? I... Hmm. I just yeah. want to... I, 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 you, you guys, if you have a thing, you can go first. I'm, I don't know. Should I use it? Should, should, I, should I use it? Should I hit him? You're good at hitting oh, things. I'm good at hitting things. Yeah, you should probably just... Put all your put all your might into it and hit him. I think. All right. Uh, I will. Um, I will burn my last effort in might and try and hit this guy. All right. Seventeen. Seventeen hits him. How much damage? Uh, can I? Am I able to use my thrust? Uh, normally you would declare that beforehand, but okay. because it costs you nothing, then sure. Sure, then uh, I will get 14 points of damage. No, wait, no, it's not a crit. Never mind. I, for some reason, I've only done crits before. Sure. Uh, uh, six, eight, uh, nine. Nine points nine of damage. Points of okay. Yeah. Plus one okay. because it's 17. Right. Oh, right. That is, that is a thing. Yes. Right. Ten. Okay. Ten points of damage. Whoosh. All right, so some of that gets There's through. There's a yell about how creepy that he looks now. Uh, you hack like completely through one of his completely crystalline legs, shatters off, and he's like, after I kill her and then him, I'm going to turn you into one of those. <laughs> and the so, rest of you. Yeah, I'm onslaughting, mental attack. <laughs> And uh, I am applying effort for damage, and I roll a nine. Uh, that is not enough. That is not enough. Uh, Meli, you are stunned. Mm -hmm. So Abijah. All right. Uh, I will. Uh, I will do pretty much the only thing I can. I have left to do, and that's just shoot him. And I rolled a one. <laughs> have no more XP or anything. All right. Um, so you miss, and uh, for simplicity, you drop your dark thrower. It skitters across the floor and is at his feet. Oh! <laughs> Damn it! All right. Every time. Krill. And now it's his turn, and he is going to uh, lash out with his. You know, he's gonna take that Numenera device on that uh, melee disabled. That's only out for one round, right? Or is it longer than that? It's, it says I de deactivated. It doesn't say anything about time. Okay. So I'm assuming you have to turn it back on. All right, so he starts fiddling with that. So that's his action. It seems to be he's reactivating his device. So it's back to you all. 
And Ali, you're no longer stunned. Do uh do Abijah or Kyrie have anything? Um, I'm gonna do the same thing I've been doing. Um, I think it's 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 my best option. So uh, onslaught, uh, apply level of effort for damage. I'm hoping that I hit. Um, and nineteen. Nice. So that, uh, I will take the extra damage. Uh, I well, uh, I guess I could take a minor effect and maybe make him drop his his thing. Um, I think I'm going to do that. So, so it's uh, uh, four points of damage, plus I'm already applying effort for damage anyway, so there's seven points of damage. Wow. Sorry, two points, sorry, two points plus the effort, so it's five points of damage. Um, but that should avoid armor. Um, but I want my minor effect to make him drop the device that he was fiddling with. All right, so he's fiddling with the thing. You blast him with another onslaught jars his brain, he drops the thing, and then he collapses on top of it, dead. Well, Yay. done, murderer. Yeah. <laughs> I laugh. <laughs> and the I, uh, I, I the let, let, get laugh in here. pain with him. <laughs> <laughs> and all this extra crystalline stuff that was on him starts to like degrade and turn into sandy powder until so he's just a regular guy again. So let's search the warriors and the dude for keys to get rid of these manacles, assuming that they're just like a lock. And yeah, they're just like a lock. And Delphos has keys. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I and I talked to the data sphere, and he's my friend. And uh, I got a map. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> I thought oh, I, th I thought that was like you were just gonna tell us about your relationship. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> I talked to him. He's a nice guy. You know, we're gonna you like catch that? a movie later. It's fine. <laughs> Whatever. All right. So you get all the prisoners free. Uh, I assume you want to like destroy as much of the stuff as you can before you leave, and then salvage it for ciphers and shins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Right. We are. We're gonna go into business. We make right. a lot of money. You loot a lot of weird crystalline tech, most of which is like physical augmentation. Although, uh, now that you've looked at Delphos, that one big crystal coming out of the center of his forehead is actually an intellect bud. Uh, it's a brain bud, so if you plug that into your own head, it adds five to your own intellect pool. So it's very good for your nano people. Uh, I, I asked Melly if she wants to shove the crystal into her face. Is that an it's artifact? An, it's an artifact. Um, yes, but I want to sanitize it first. <laughs> <laughs> his brain seems... wipe, wipe it down with the swab. Yeah. Uh, his brain's a little cockeyed there, so <laughs> I don't want any of that. I, like, I take it out, I just kind of wipe the stuff off the end. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you want it? It's good enough. Just yeah. to bring your brain, it's all fine. Five seconds for brains. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That sounds lovely. <laughs> All right, and you rescue the prisoners, get them out of there without too much other trouble, and we'll call that done. Yay! Fantastic. Very oh cool. man. Um, well, Thank that you guys, all, the, all the viewers for all the great assist. That was I oh know. yeah. Without that, that was awesome. Guys, that was uh, yeah. that was fantastic. Guys, thank you. If you're in chat, let us know what you thought of that uh, of that session of our of our little game here. Um, we're gonna go around, of course, and talk to all of the people here. Get some uh, get some thoughts and impressions from them. What the, you know, whether you guys had a good time, whether you had some fun, uh, and then of course we got a ton of stuff to talk about. So let's let's go around and and talk to everyone. What did um, what did you guys think? You guys had fun with our uh, with with Sean's crystal adventure, in the the fun house of of crystals. Yeah, Sean, you don't jam for us very often, so it's always nice when. We get to have a jam. Also, every time you shake your head, you do like a max headroom thing. Right, it's, it's I've been, super it's, fun. It, I don't know if that's a filter or like it's, it's just his camera. I actually do that in real life. That's the weird thing. <laughs> Constant <laughs> blur effect. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, was, this was a lot of fun. But I, I like the setup of um, um, of the charity thing of people being able to help us out or hinder us or <laughs> you know, no matter what. It was a really cool, really cool experience. Oh man, yeah. No, the um, the the charity thing is a ton of fun. We do this. Uh, sorry, where's my? Where's that coming from? That's coming from there. Uh, we actually do this every. Uh, every oh god, we're just playing with filters now. <laughs> it's time uh, to go home, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, you don't want to see the filters that many cam can put on my camera. It's it's not pretty. Um, yeah, we do this we do this for all our games, but the charity has been a ton of fun. Thank you guys. First of all, I want to give a huge thank you to Monty Cook Games, uh, every, uh, Shauna, Monty, Sean, and Bear for coming to hang out and let me play Numenera for my first time. I hope I didn't embarrass you and make a mockery great. of your system too great. much. All good. It went great. <laughs> I had I had a ton of fun playing with you guys. Um, I guess before we uh, before we we kind of move on to, to some some exit business, do you guys tell us a little bit about um, about Monty Cook Games and Numenera and you know uh, anything you guys want to want to let the talk about right now? You guys you know about the game, let the viewers know if they're interested in trying it. I know we had some quick start rules and stuff uh, that Darcy was posting before. Well, um, if you're completely new to Numenera, we have uh, what's called the Numenera Starter Set. It's a $25 box, gives you the rules and, and characters and everything you need to just get in an adventure and all kinds of cool little things all in a box. Uh, makes a great Christmas gift and uh, get, get you started playing your, your first Numenera adventure really fast. Um, and, uh, if you like what you find there, or if you're not brand new to Numenera, um, you should know that we have, uh, basically an, uh, an update to things we're calling Numenera 2 coming out next year, middle of next year. Uh, it's going to take Numenera and kind of move it off into a new direction, uh, focusing it on things where the player characters, uh, take an even bigger role in in helping to rebuild the world and 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 make the world a better place and uh we should probably mention that right now uh we have a bundle of holding you can go yep. to holding dot i dropped the link in chat yeah okay cool yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, get a great deal on some of our non-Numenera uh, products that we have, Cypher System and The Strange. Fantastic. Guys, I – well, and also um... – I should let you know if you guys, uh, for everyone who donated today. By the way, I wanna I wanna give a shout out. We are ending tonight, uh, or ending tonight's game with a total of three thousand nine hundred and fifty six dollars and sixty nine cents. So a ton of money. We are just shy of our four thousand dollar goal, but so much raised for charity. You guys have no idea how much this means to all of us. If you want, anyone who donated at least ten dollars gets a chance to win. We've got some new Monero box sets uh, that have been added to our prize pool. If you guys don't. No, I have an entire guest room full of prizes. I have books for D and D, a Pathfinder. I have dice boxes. I have dice. I have rolling trays. We have artwork, all, and now a ton of new Monera stuff uh, to add. And you guys can win all of that. I'm looking forward to putting that in uh, a bunch of people's hands. The system was a ton of fun. I, I had a blast playing it. Um, I've never played it before, but I'm hopefully maybe we can do some in the future. It is just. Uh, it's, it's just a ton of fun, man. And thank you so much to everyone who joined us. Thank you, Thanks. McLoken, for the host before, man. Uh, I dropped a link if you don't know about Loke. Um, thank you guys for the subs. Thank you for the resubs. Thank you, everyone, for uh, for your donations and all of that good stuff. Um, uh, is there... Let's see. Uh, do you guys you guys want to tell people where they, can, where they can find more of you guys on the internet if they want to follow you? Uh, uh, Monty Monty Cook Game. Sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Uh, MontyCookGames.com is the best place. Uh, we also have a Twitter account and Facebook, of course. Um, and we often do really cool things with our Twitter account where you can follow along, like the new stuff that we're making. Uh, we do one or two Kickstarters every year, and those are always tons of fun. So if you like Kickstarters, that's a great. You can come follow us on Kickstarter and kind of see the next big thing that we're doing. Um, but MontyCookGames.com is where we do blog posts about, uh, you know, like how to be a GM or how to be a better GM or be a better player or play your game in a whole new way. Um, and so that's a great place to follow us as well. In fact, in the month of January, we have a thing called New Game Master Month. Um, and this is, uh, I mean, it's it's somewhat focused to our on our games, but we have, uh, we've sort of recruited some other companies to kind of join in and and focus all of january on people who've never run a game before maybe you've been a player for a long time but you've never actually run a game it's a series of articles and uh, uh interactive stuff and you just just check out montecookgames.com uh or newgamemastermonth.com i think as well uh and uh, it's, it's a great program 
definitely going to be sharing some stuff about the new Game Master Month because I am super excited about it. I love passing the mantle of, of Game Master to people who have never tried it before, and hopefully we can uh, we can get some more people in the DMC. Oh my god, what is going on? Just as we're about to drop the host, Retrovirum <laughs> drops $43.31 and says, Clean numbers! Yay! That is gonna, we are ending tonight on the $4,000 mark. Thank that you guys is amazing. so much, so, so much. $4,000 raised in less than a month for St. Jude Children's Hospital, and we're not even done. Um, guys, uh, I know we're, we're getting late and some people have to get out of here. So thank you so much. That is, um, we are, we're going to end things for tonight. We're going to let you guys go, but don't, uh, I want you guys to come along with us because as always, we like to pass the love on to someone else who's streaming and I can think of no better than my friend Dan Ataj, who is doing himself a charity stream. He's an amazing streamer and he's doing a charity stream for Extra Life for Kids. So if you guys want to enjoy some uh, some non-D&D content, but definitely some great stuff and, and see some more opportunities to help kids out this holiday season, that's going to be where you're going to do it. Uh, so let me go ahead and drop that in chat and then we will start the, uh, the process of getting out of here. Thank you so much, Virum, with the, the, the last minute. Uh, help out. That is amazing. Nope. That's not what I wanted to do. Stop it. Stop it. Raid Danitage. There we go. Guys, uh, we, there's the command. There's the dice in chat. All you got to do is copy those things and then I'm going to start the raid thing and then you guys are all going to be brought over there with us. So slash raid Danitage. That's going to start the countdown. I want everyone to get involved. Thank you, Adam Hein TH, for following. Uh, guys, get in the raid. We're going to pass the love on to him. Thank you so much. It's been a ton of fun. And again, a huge thank you to everyone at Monty Cook Games. These guys are amazing. They make some amazing products, and I'm super, super grateful. And a special thanks to Darcy, uh, Darcy L. Ross, for putting this all together. She has been, um, she's been an absolute uh, joy to work with and just... Uh, you know, made all this happen. So thank you so much, guys. That's going to be it for us. We're going to get out of here. We will see you guys next time. But you know the deal. As always, thank you for watching. Don't let Dice Thulu get his tentacles on you because he might turn you into a crystal drider. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, everyone. We'll thank see you next you. time, guys. Happy Bye. Holidays. And we...